Imagine surviving 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. And throughout this journey, you can see how my story progresses and all the insane things we get up to. So grab your snacks, sit back, and enjoy the movie. So here we go, it's officially day one, and I turned around and I found myself this chest. I opened it up and there was some apples, some torches, some sticks, and also some saplings. Very nice. So I headed outside to see what else I could find, and I found myself this birch tree, and I collected myself a few pieces of birch wood. I made myself a crafting table, and then I made myself a wooden pickaxe, and I was super happy. Then I went to go and explore the village, I wanted to see what else I could find. I came across this villager and he wanted to tell me something. He told me that only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you're going to enjoy this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. But anyways, back to the video. So I collected myself a few pieces of hay right here and also came across this farmer. Uh, he was nice enough to give me some of his crops right here. So I collected myself a few pieces, came across this iron golem and I came across this castle and I found myself a brewing stand. So I came across this another house right here and I found myself some potatoes and some saplings and uh, I kind of need to get some stone uh, yeah the villagers won't mind surely so I rushed back to my crafting table and I made myself a stone pickaxe and now what I decided to do was to uh, go exploring a little bit. I wanted to see what I could find. I found myself this little lake right here. And off in the distance, I noticed there was some sugar cane. So I headed over there and collected myself a few pieces. And I also found myself this cave. Uh, yeah, there was lava, so I had to be careful. So I made myself way down to the cave and I collected myself a few pieces of stone. And I noticed there was some iron. So I collected myself some. Then after that, I headed out the caves and I made myself some stone tools. And then after that, I headed back to the village and I thought I'd do a bit of trading with one of these villagers. So I did. Got myself his emerald. I was super happy. And sadly, it was already getting dark, so I headed back home. Went back to my home and I went to sleep. So it's officially day two and uh, now what I wanted to do was go and get myself some wood because I want to make my very own farm. So I placed in a few logs, placed in a few fences and I also made myself a bit of a gate right here. And after that, I flattened up all the ground placed in some potatoes and also I wanted to make myself a bit of a sugarcane farm right here. Nothing special but it'll do for now. Then later on that day what I decided to do was to go exploring. I wanted to see what I could find and I found myself this another village and for some reason these villagers are like staring at this roof for some reason. But anyways I collected myself some berries and also some pumpkins as well. Then I entered this house and I found myself uh, another chest with some useful loot. But anyways, after that I headed back home. Day 3 to 5 I made myself some iron tools and I now wanted to go to the caves and I wanted to find myself some materials. So I found myself this cave and I found myself loads of iron. This was amazing. And I also found this another cave. So I went to go investigate and what I decided to do was to make myself a shield. There was quite a few mobs and I needed to keep safe. And then I found myself some lapis. I couldn't believe it. And then as I turned the corner, there it was. Diamonds. I couldn't believe it. So I collected myself a few diamonds and uh, after that I found myself this mine shaft. It wasn't too much really, just a few cobwebs, nothing special. But anyways, it is now time to head home. So I made myself a way up and I went home. So I got home and smelted up all the stuff that I collected, like my iron and gold. And as well, I made myself a diamond pickaxe. Day six, I uh, chopped down a few more trees, cleared out a bit of a space right here, and I started work on a bit of a cow farm. So I placed in a few logs, also placed in some birch uh, fences right here, and I also made myself a few paths. And now I needed to go out and get some cows. Luckily, there was some nearby. So I went over there, collected the cows, and finally I brought them back to their new home. Day seven, I made myself a iron door because these villagers kept coming into my home. And as well, I made myself a full set of iron armor and also some tools as well and after that i did a bit more farming harvest up all the potatoes and carrots and also i harvested up all my sugarcane farm as well and as well i wanted to make myself a bit of a tree farm right here so i cleared out a bit of space and made myself a very simple tree farm and there it is uh, very simple so i made myself a few more paths right here because i wanted to make it look uh, a lot neater Day 8, I wanted to adventure out a bit and see what I could find. And I found myself this nether portal. And I also collected myself some obsidian as well. I kind of need this for a nether portal. So I collected myself a few pieces. And I also collected myself a few dark oak logs as well. Because I might use these for future builds. Day 9, I placed in a bunch of dirt right here. Dropped down a few more trees. And day 10 to 16, I now wanted to work on my very own home. 
and I'll also place in some stone brick slabs right here to give it a bit more detail. Place in a few lanterns as well, which looks very nice. Place in a few pieces of glass and also some chests as well. And I also decided to give uh, a bit of support as well right here. And there it is, our home is pretty much complete. Wow, it looks amazing. Day 17, I did a bit more farming, and now I wanted to make the nether portal, so I did. Placed in all the obsidian, lit it up, and I went through. Got through to the other side, there wasn't much really, just a typical nether. So for the next couple of days, I went exploring, and I found myself this bastion. And I also came across this gold block. And then I found myself this chest, which has some very nice loot. And in seconds, I was swarmed by all the piglins. So I had to make a run for it. Um, yeah, this was not good at all. The piglin made it around the side, hit me, and did serious damage. Then I fell, and I was on a half a heart. I panicked, so I ran for my life. Luckily, I was able to get away just in time. Wow, that was close. But anyways, I found myself this another chest right here, and it had some very nice loot. Even better, I came across these two other chests as well. I couldn't believe it. So I opened up the chest and I found myself this diamond pickaxe. Then after that, I left the bastion and I came across this nether fortress. I made myself a way up right here, and I wanted to go and collect myself some blaze rods. So I did. I fought off some blazes, collected myself a few blaze rods. And after that, I wanted to go explore the fortress a bit. And I found myself some nether wart right here and also some soul sand. So I collect myself some. I would need this. And now it is time to head home. Day 24, I finally get home. And what I was supposed to do now was to make myself a bit of a nether wart farm right here. So I did. Place in some nether wart. And there it is. Nether wart farm is done. And I also did a bit more farming right here. Harvesting and stuff all the potatoes. Day 25, I wanted to go exploring a bit more. So I went out and to my surprise, there it was. A pillager outpost. I couldn't believe it. And I also found myself these targets right here. And then as I looked to my side, there they was. A pillager. I couldn't believe it. So I fought him. And then after that, I went inside the outpost. And there was a few more. So I took care of them as well. Made it up to the top, and I found myself this chest, which had some okay loot, honestly. So I made myself way down from the outpost, and I couldn't believe it. There were so many more pillagers, so I did my best to uh, take them all out. There were so many. So I left the outpost, and I came across the leader. So I fought him, and I headed home. And as I was heading home, I couldn't believe it. I just started a raid. This was really bad. And in seconds, pillagers were everywhere. But luckily, the Iron Golem had it under control. He seemed to take them out very easily. And as I was heading back home, I looked to my left, and there it was. There were so many pillagers. So I ran back to the Iron Golems, and I fought off some of the pillagers. And then, as I was helping the Iron Golems take out the pillagers, I was hit by this axe, which did some serious damage. I couldn't believe how much damage that did. But after a few swings, I was able to take him out. That was really close. So I took out the last pillager, and there it is. The raid has been complete. Day 27, I wanted to make myself a bit of a mind right here. So I wanted to make this go a ways down. So it took a little bit of time. So I continued mining in a straight line, and I found myself this cave. And to my surprise, there was a mine shaft right here. I could not believe it at all. So I continued to explore some of the caves right here, and I found myself a diamond. So I went over there to go and collect it. And also, I collected myself a few more pieces of obsidian. I would need this for the enchantment table. And I went home and made myself some books. And also, I made myself the enchantment table. Went outside to go and place it in. And yeah, there it is. We finally have the enchantment table. So I just placed in a few stone bricks right here to give it a bit more detail. And I also wanted to make myself a bit of a wall right here. And of course, I got to add a few leaves around as well. Day 32, I now wanted to go on an adventure. So I headed out. So I came across this another village and I collected myself a few pieces of hay and also found myself this another castle and I found myself another brewing stand. So I continued my adventure to see what I could find and yeah, more pillagers. So I fought them and easily took them out. So I found myself this ruins never portal and I found myself this gold block. So I collected it. As I got up this hill, I couldn't believe it. A jungle. I was super happy. So I collected myself a few cocoa beans and also some jungle wood as well. And also I found myself some bamboo. This was amazing. 
even better. I found myself some melons. I was so happy. And then I came across this bamboo forest. Um, yeah, there's a lot of bamboo here. And then to my surprise, there it was, a jungle temple. So I went to go and investigate. So I entered the jungle and I found myself this creeper. Yeah, that was close. Uh, but sadly, there wasn't any good loot, but I did find myself this diamond horse armor, which is quite cool, I guess. So I continue exploring and to my surprise, there it was, another jungle temple. And once again, wouldn't you know it, not very good loot at all. So I left, but I came across this parrot. So what I decided to do was to tame him. I now finally had a friend. I was so happy. Then finally, on day 40, we finally arrive home. Wow, it's nice to be home. So I went back home and made myself a few pieces of bread because I was kind of low on food and I needed a way of getting food and I kind of needed bread because bread's a good food source. Day 41, I wanted to now make myself a bit of a ruin stand area. Use some cobblestone for the flooring and also made a little area for the ruin stand to go right here. And I also did a bit more decorating around and a few uh, stone walls right here. So I placed in a few chests for storage. Then after that, I made myself a few fire resistant potions. This was amazing. Day 42, I now wanted to make myself a bit of a bamboo farm. So I cleared out a bit of space right here and I made myself a very simple bamboo farm. So now I wanted to spend the next couple of days finding myself some diamonds. Found myself this cave, which is pretty cool. And then there he was diamonds so i headed over there to go and collect them but i needed a lot more diamonds if i wanted to make myself a full set of diamond armor so i just spent the next couple of days collecting myself loads of diamonds and then finally i now have enough diamonds so i headed back home so i went back home made myself this diamond tower right here and i minded all the diamonds up got myself loads of diamonds this was amazing so i went back indoors and made myself a full set of diamond armor and also some tools this was amazing i now had diamond armor i was super happy and as well i did a bit more farming just collected myself a few more potatoes and as well i actually wanted to get myself a pet horse and luckily there was a horse right here so i tamed him this was amazing i now had a pet horse so i needed a place for this horse to go so i made him his very own home Day 50, I did a bit more farming, and then I noticed all the villagers, they was gone. I searched absolutely everywhere for these villagers, but all the villagers were gone. This was sad, but there was one villager left, and all I had to do was to make myself a villager farm. So I did a bit more decorating right here, and the next couple of days, I worked on a villager farm. I used a bunch of stone bricks right here, and I had to dig out a massive space, which took quite a bit of time, honestly. But luckily after a bit of time I got that all done, placed in a bunch more stone bricks right here, also made the villagers their very own farm right here, and as well I had to make myself loads of beds, so I had to go out and get myself loads of wool, so I found myself loads of sheep, so I went home and made myself too many beds right here, but that was okay, I placed in all the beds after that in, and all I had to do now was to go and get some villagers, so I went back to that other village, and I collected myself this villager. Then finally, I was able to get the villager to his new home. And as well, I was able to transfer the second one as well. And the village farm is pretty much done. Gave some of the villagers some food and Dale was very happy. And as well, the villager farm seems to work. So I gave the villager a farming job right here and he traded potatoes. I was so happy. So I got all my potatoes and I traded with the villager. Uh, I kind of forgot about the enchantment table. I need to get myself loads of books. But first, I have to go and get myself some ender eyes. So I headed back to the nether, clicked myself a few ender pearls from the enderman. And yeah, this took a little bit of time, honestly, to go and get myself enough ender pearls. And after that, I went home and made myself some eyes of ender. I was super happy. So I threw the eye of ender and now I wanted to go and find the stronghold. So me and my horse, we headed out to go and find the stronghold. And finally, on day 62, we finally found the stronghold. Fought off a few mobs right here. There was quite a few skeletons, honestly. But luckily, I was able to take them out very easily. I also found myself this chest right here, which had some very good loot. Then finally, on day 63, I finally found the library. So I collected myself loads of books. I made sure to collect plenty of these books because I'll need these for the enchantment table. And then, as I was exploring the stronghold, there it was, the end portal. I couldn't believe it. So I placed in a few eyes of ender and yeah, we only need two more. But anyways, it is now time to head home. So I made myself a way up and I went back to my horse and we went home. 
65, we finally arrive home. So why did I just do was to place in all the bookshelves now, and there it is. The enchantment room is now done. Then after that, I just did a bit of enchanting on some of my armor. Got myself protection 4, which was amazing. And I also got myself power 4 on my bow as well. But sadly, I did not have enough levels. So I went back to the nether and collected myself loads more levels. So I went home, enchanted my sword, and I got myself a sharpness 4. This was amazing. Fortune 3 pickaxe, protection 3 leggings. And there it is, we finally did it. We finally got a full set of enchanted diamond armor. So after that, I went back to the villager farm and gave the villagers some jobs. And now I wanted to make myself a bigger potato farm right here. Placing a bunch of fences and also flattened up the ground. Uh, this took a little time, but after a bit of time, I was able to get it all done. Day 72, I just made some more paths. And as well, I wanted to get myself a woodland mansion map so i had to do a lot of trading with for all the villages and stuff to get myself loads of emeralds and finally i was able to get myself a woodland explorer map so i got myself the woodland map and yeah all i had to do now was to go and find it but before i do that i wanted to harvest up all my potatoes right here so I did. Got myself loads of potatoes and I did a bunch of trading with all the villagers and I also bought myself some apples. So it's now time to go and take out the Woodland Mansion. So I headed out in search of the Woodland Mansion. So I traveled for days and finally, after a bit of time, there it was, the mansion. So I made myself a way around the mansion right here, found myself the entrance and I fought off some pillagers. As I went up these stairs, I couldn't believe it. There was like three pillagers right here, but I was okay and I easily took them out. So I turned this corner and there he was, the evoker. So I had to take him out the quickest I could. And there it is, I got myself the token of undying. Even worse, I turned this corner and there was a creeper right here. I was hit by these pillagers and I panicked. And then they got me down to half a heart. This was bad. So I left the room and I took out all these effects right here. And there it is. We did it. We took out all the evokers and we got ourselves a token of undying. But there was one more thing to do, to set all the place on fire. Yeah, I don't think the villagers are going to like me after this. And yeah, wow, this place went up in flames very quick. Day 89, I finally arrive home. Did a bit of trading with uh, some of the villagers right here and also bought myself some pumpkin pie. Went back to Never and got myself a few more blaze rods right here. I kind of needed a few of these. Day 90, I travel home. I get home and make myself a very simple melon farm right here. And to finish off the day, I wanted to make some potions. Day 91 to 95, I wanted to find myself a few diamonds because all my armor was about to break and I needed to repair it all. So I collected myself loads of diamonds. So I went home, made myself a few more uh, pickaxes right here, enchanted them as well. And then I repaired all my armor. And there it is, our armor is now fully repaired. And I also made myself a few more eyes of ender. And I also made my pet parrot a little bed area right here. It is now time. It is now time to go and defeat the Ender Dragon. So I collected all the things I needed in my chest, said goodbye to my parrot, and I headed out. So here we go, it is now time to go and take out the Ender Dragon. And there it was. The first thing I had to do was to go and take out all these end crystals. The Ender Dragon was not happy whatsoever. So then I proceeded to take out all the end crystals. And then as I took out this end crystal, there it was. The Ender Dragon charging at me. I had to run. It is now time to do damage to the Ender Dragon. So I had my strength potion and I went in with a sword attack. So I used my bow to do serious damage to the Ender Dragon and I was flung forwards a bit. But luckily I was okay, had a golden apple and it was now time to finish this. I took my final swing and there it was. The Ender Dragon has been defeated. We did it. Wow. 
So I gathered up all the XP and I also wanted to get myself the dragon egg as well. So I did. And there it is. We did it. And then after that, I went back home. So I was chopping down some trees and I noticed there was a pig and I wanted to keep him as a friend. So I did. So I brought him to my home and there it is. We have a pet pig. So then I just flattened up a bit more ground because I wanted to use this area right here for the dragon egg. So I added a few quartz around and also added some emerald blocks right here which looked very nice and i also added a few pieces of birch wood around and all we had to do now was to place in the dragon egg wow there it is we did it in today's video i have to survive 100 days as a evoker and also i have three objectives first craft myself a totem of undying Second, build my very own outpost. And finally, defeat the Ender Dragon. Will I be able to survive 100 days as a evoker in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching to find out. So here we go. Our journey begins on day one. And the first thing I noticed, there was a chest right in front of me. So I opened it up and I found myself a sword, also some apples, some bread, and also some torches. And also I found myself a second chest right here. So I opened it up and I found myself a totem of undying. So now what I wanted to do was to go around exploring. I wanted to see what I could find. So I came across this room right here. Nothing special really. So I headed downstairs and I headed to the armory room. I opened up a chest right here and I found myself a stone pickaxe and also some torches. Watches. And also there was a second chest and this time it had some even better loot. I was very surprised. So after that I headed outside and I wanted to go and get myself some materials. So I headed to the nearest mountain and I got myself some stone and also some coal. But also I needed some wood. So I went to the nearest dark oak tree right here and I started chopping it down and collecting myself plenty of wood. But there was also one more thing I needed. I needed some food. So I went out and I found myself some cows. So I went over to the cows and I got myself some food. So I made myself a furnace so I could actually cook all my food and also I made myself some leather boots. This was amazing. And then as I was exploring, I noticed that the sun was already set in, but that was okay. Mobs did not attack me and I would be okay. So I continued exploring and I found myself this cave right here. And the good thing was I found myself some iron. I was super happy. So I collected myself all the iron right here and I also found myself this zombie with chain armor. This is pretty cool. And then as I left the caves, there it was, a village. So I carefully made myself away over to the village, entered this villager's house right here and I started attacking the villager. I wanted to get myself some emeralds. So I took out the villager and there it was, emeralds. So I took out this villager right here, left the house, turned around and there it was, an iron golem. I couldn't believe it, so I made a run for it. I used my crossbow the best I could to take out the iron golem. And then finally, I took my final shot and there it was, the iron golem has been defeated. So all the villagers are gone. So what I was supposed to do was to actually take all their stuff. So I took their bed, took their stone cutter, took all their crops and food and also their brewing stand as well. There was one last thing to do, was to set the place on fire. So I made myself a flint and steel, and I set all the villagers' homes on fire. So I just used the flint and steel to actually set fire to all these homes right here. And yeah, I don't think the villagers would be so happy if they would find out their village has been destroyed. So after that, I headed back to the Woodland Mansion, and I wanted to make myself some chests so I could actually store some of my items in. And also, I made myself a very simple doorway right here. And once I was at the village, I also found myself this bell. So I decided to pit it up on the wall. And yeah, it looks awesome. So later on that day, what I decided to do was to actually make myself a indoor food farm. So I cleared out a bunch of space right here and I started work on an indoor food farm. Used some dark oak wood, placed in a bunch of dirt, placed in a few torches, then planted all the food. Yeah, the food farm is pretty much done. Day 3 to 8, I wanted to now go to the caves and get myself loads of materials. So I headed out and I found myself this ravine right here. So I jumped down and I collected myself a few pieces of iron. And then as I was mining in a straight line, there it was, 
diamonds. I couldn't believe this. So I collected myself all the diamonds right here, and I also ran into a mine shaft, which is pretty cool. So I found myself a few pieces of iron right here, and also some gold as well. And I went to go and explore the mine shaft a bit. I wanted to see what I could find. And then, as I turned a corner, I couldn't believe it. More diamonds. This was amazing. So I collected those as well. So I found myself this really nice cave right here. And I found myself some lapis, which was amazing. Once I'm in the caves, I also wanted to collect myself some obsidian. So I made myself a diamond pickaxe and I went to go and get myself plenty of obsidian. And now I wanted to head home, but I ran into this fish right here, which is uh, pretty interesting if I had to say so myself. But anyways, I made it to the surface. So I went home and smelted up all the stuff that I collected. Day 10, I made myself a full set of iron armor, which is amazing. After that, I destroyed all these beds right here because I wanted to actually place in my nether portal right here. So I placed in a bunch of obsidian, lit it up, and there it is. So what I decided to do was to actually go through and get to the other side. And yeah, there wasn't really much really, just uh, a bunch of saw sand. So I went exploring and I found myself this bastion, which was pretty cool. And I found myself this chest. And yeah, it had some very nice loot. Ah, uh, glowstone, I might need some of this. So I opened up this chest right here and I found myself this crossbow. So I left the bastion and I wanted to actually find myself a second bastion. So I headed out and finally I found myself a second bastion. So I entered the bastion and I wanted to go and get myself all the gold. So I jumped down, collected myself all the gold right here, and yeah, there was so much gold, which was amazing. Hey, a diamond helmet. Yes, I'll take that, boys. And then, as I was about to leave the bastion, I was hit by a magma cube, and it knocked me into the lava. This was bad, but luckily, I had my totem of undying with me, and that saved my life. And wow, that was close. Day 18, I finally get back to the nether portal, and I get home, and what I decided to do was to do a bit of farming. And I also wanted to make myself a totem crafter. And there it was. So what I decided to do was to actually make myself a totem of undying. So I just used a bit of gold, some emeralds, and also a diamond. So I made two of them just in case. Also, I haven't really explored the mansion that much, have I? So what I decided to do was to go around and explore the mansion. I wanted to see what I could find. Found this secret room right here, entered, and yeah, nothing really. Just a tree and some axe right here. Um, is that supposed to be Steve or something? So I entered this room and I found myself whatever this is, I don't even know what this is. But then I found myself at this chest. Opened it up and I found myself uh, some okay loot, honestly. Day 19, I made myself some golden apples. And I also wanted to do a little bit of exploring. And then there it was, another village. I know what I had to do. I had to take out all the villagers and get myself some emeralds. Also found myself at this house right here, and yeah, had a few useful things honestly. And then there he was, the iron golem. So I got my crossbow, and I started shooting the iron golem. So I tried to use my axe right here, but unfortunately um, it didn't really work, and it almost cost me my life. And you guessed it, I had to set fire to the village once again. And there it is, the village has been destroyed. Day 20, I was out exploring, and then there it was, an outpost. So I headed over there the quick as I could, and yeah, everybody seemed rather friendly. So I entered the outpost, and I found myself some enchanted bottles. So I left the outpost, and I continued to see what else I could find. Found this ice spike biome, which is pretty cool. And then finally, by day 21, I found myself a mushroom biome. This was amazing. So I headed over there the quick as I could, uh, but there wasn't really much, honestly. Just mushroom cows and a bunch of mushrooms. But then, as I got to the ocean, and I could see in the water, there was some fish. So what I decided to do was to get myself a pet fish. And there it is. Wow, we finally have a pet fish. I was super happy. The next day, I found myself a desert right here. And the good thing was, there was an outpost right here as well. What's the odds? Ah, look, a desert temple. So I entered the temple, and I found myself some very, very nice loot. Day 23. I was walking back to my mansion, and then I noticed it was on fire. 
this was bad. So I panicked and I made myself away over there the quickest I could. Couldn't believe it. Our mansion's on fire. Who could have done this? So I quickly made myself away into the mansion right here. And this was bad. There was fire everywhere. I couldn't believe it. So I tried my best to take out all the fire, but it was no use. I couldn't do it, but I had to get to my room. I had to go back and get all my stuff. So I made a run for it. And then as I turned this corner, even more flames, but I had to keep going. I had to get through. So I tried my best to get all through the fire right here and I did. I got through and I had to make a run for it to my room. As I got to my room, I couldn't believe it. All the fire, I panicked. I tried to take out the fire, but I had to be quick. I had to collect all the things I needed. So I collected my token crafter, also my brewing stand, and also my gold and food. And in seconds, everything was on fire. I had to make a run for it. I had to get out. Finally, we're out of here. That was close, but I need to get a better view. Let me climb up this tree right here. I can't believe it. Who would have done this? So for the next couple of days, I wanted to go around and find a new place to live. Then a day later, as I was exploring, I could see off in the distance there was some sort of building, so I headed over there. So I made it over there and yeah, there was pillagers, my friends. So I thought, why not? Let's set up camp around here. Uh, there was a massive ravine right here, but that was okay. I set up camp right here, placing a few crafting tables, my bed, and also a chest, but I needed some wood. So I went over to the forest and I collected myself some wood. And yeah, I collected myself loads of dirt because I wanted to fill uh, this area right here with all dirt to make it all level. And then finally, by the next day, I finished placing all the dirt. And to my surprise, uh, we have a visitor. And yeah, um, he didn't really trade anything good, honestly. Hey, but he did drop some leads. I'll take those. Later on that day, I wanted to actually make myself a bit of a farm because I didn't have a way of getting food properly. So I made myself a very simple carrot and potato farm. And to finish off a day, I wanted to make myself a bit of a cobblestone path right here. Day 28 to 36, I wanted to now build my very own outpost. So I placed in a bunch of wooden logs right here and also some stone bricks. And for the top, I used some oak planks right here. Also made the roof and I kind of wanted to use the same design from the other outpost that was nearby. So I kind of copied the other outpost uh, roof design. So I tried my best to make it look uh, the same. Placed in a bunch of stairs as well, and also I gave it a bit more detail. Hey, I made myself a very simple staircase right here. Looks awesome. And also I thought I'd use some item frames right here, just to add a bit more decoration. Finished it up by adding some more slabs in, and yeah, it looks awesome, but it is missing one thing. I'm missing a bit of decoration. So I headed to the forest and got myself some leaves, and also I collected myself some flowers as well. And yeah, this makes it look a lot better. Day 37, I did a bit of farming and also made myself some golden carrots. And I also wanted to go back to the caves and get myself some obsidian and also loads of diamonds. So I headed back to the caves and I found myself a few pieces of iron, which was very nice. So I collected myself a few pieces of obsidian so I could make myself a enchantment table. Even better, I found myself some diamonds. So I made sure to collect plenty of these diamonds, so I had enough for a full set of diamond armor and also some tools as well. Finally, day 45, I finally make it back to the surface, and to my surprise, we're right outside my home. I couldn't believe it. So I made myself a enchantment table right here, and there it is, we finally got an enchantment table. I was super happy. And then finally, I make myself a full set of diamond armor, and there it is. Wow. 
we finally have a full set of a diamond armor. And I can't forget about diamond tools as well. At 46, I made myself an armor stand so I can actually display all my armor. Made a bit of an area for the enchantment table to go. Used a variety of blocks like stone bricks, cobblestone, and also a bunch of slabs. Did a bit of decorating and a few leaves around. A few finds and also some lanterns as well. And yeah, this place looks awesome. And to finish off the day, once again, I wanted to actually fill in a bunch of dirt right here. Day 47, I made myself a few uh, cobblestone walls right here. Very simple, but very nice. And yeah, our place is getting along very well. I'm super happy. Day 48 to day 50, I wanted to now make myself a bit of a storage area. So I dug out a massive space underground. So I placed in a bunch of uh, chests right here, placed in a few wooden slabs. And I also wanted to do a bit of decorating to the outside. So I placed in a few lanterns right here. And to finish it off, I placed in a few more chests. And there it is, the storage room is pretty much done. And I also can't forget about this thing right here as well. Yeah, our place is looking awesome with the enchantment area, all the decoration and also the watchtower. This place is looking amazing, but I almost forgot, almost forgot about my pet fish. So what I had to do was to make him his very own pond. All I had to do now was to place in my pet fish. There it was. And the good thing is he really seemed to like his new home. He was super happy. Day 52, I want to go back to the caves and get myself a little bit more obsidian so I can make myself a brand new nether portal. So I got home and I thought this looks like a perfect spot for the nether portal. So I built it right here. I lit it up and I went through. So I got through to the other side and now what I wanted to do was to actually go and find myself a fortress. After a couple days of exploring, I found myself this fortress. So I didn't hesitate and I quickly made myself a way over to the fortress. Built myself a way up right here and I took out this wither skeleton right here and he dropped a wither head. Surprisingly. But anyways, I found myself a never walk, so what I just do was to actually collect myself a few pieces. Finally, I found myself a blaze spawner and I collected myself loads of blaze rods. Also, I needed a few ender pearls, so I went to the warped forest and I fought some endermen. This took a little time, but finally, I had enough ender pearls and I wanted to go and collect myself some warped wood as well. I might use this for some future builds. And finally, I get back to the nether portal. Day 60, I want to build a neverwort farm. So I placed in a bunch of salt sand, placed in some salt soil as well. Used some of that warped wood that I collected. And yeah, it definitely went very well with this build. Placed in a few uh, fences. And also I decided to make myself these torches right here as well. And yeah, these definitely give it a lot more detail. Later on that day, I make myself some Eyes of Ender. So the next day, I wanted to go and find the Stronghold. So I threw my Eye of Ender and I headed that way. Day 62, I finally found the Stronghold. So I rushed over there as quick as I could and I collected myself loads of bookshelves. I needed loads of these for the enchantment table. So I made sure to get loads. Once I was in the library, I also found this chest and it had this very good book and I'm definitely gonna put this on my crossbow. And then as I made myself way down these stairs, there it is, the end portal. So I placed on some eyes of Ender and yeah, we only need five more now. So I continue to explore the stronghold to see what else I could find. And to my surprise, I couldn't find anything, honestly. I looked around, couldn't find anything. So what I decided to do, you guessed it, go home. Got home, chopped down a bunch of trees so I could get myself loads of wood and make myself loads of bookshelves. So I finally have enough bookshelves, so I placed them all in. And there it is, my enchantment room is now done. After that, I did a bit of enchanting on some of my armor and got myself a protection free. And also I got myself this really, really good pickaxe as well. It's time to pick those books on my crossbow. So that's what I did. But sadly, I didn't have enough levels for the rest of my armor and tools. So I headed back to the nether and I went to go and get myself a load of core blocks. And there it is, we finally have enough levels now, it's time to go home. So I get home and enchant all my armor and tools. So I combine my helmet with another helmet 
to make a very good helmet. And there it is. All our armor and tools are now fully enchanted. Wow. But there's one thing I noticed. I noticed that my fish was quite sad. So what I decided to do was to go out and get myself some lily pads and also collect myself a few pieces of seagrass as well. So finally, I get home, place in all the seagrass and also some lily pads. And yeah, my pet fish was very happy. After that, I decided to make myself a few more cobblestone walls right here to give it a bit more detail and also add a bit more of a pathway right here. So now what I wanted to do was to actually make myself a bit of a potato farm and also wanted to make myself a bit of a wall as well. So I cleared out a bunch of trees right here and also cleared out a bunch of dirt as well. And the next day I wanted to make a bit of a wall area right here and I also finished up on a bit of a potato farm right here. And yeah, our area is pretty much done. This definitely makes the place look a lot better. Day 82, I wanted to get myself a pet horse. So I found this lovely black horse right here and I wanted to tame him. And then there it was. We did it. Wow, we finally have a pet horse. So I decided to make him his very own home. And yeah, the good thing is the horse really seemed to like it. So day 83, I wanted to find myself a jungle, but before I headed out, I noticed that there was like so many pillagers right here. But anyways, I came across this pink sheep right here, which is pretty rare and pretty awesome. So what I decided to do was to go say hi. So I said hello to the pink sheep right here. And then finally, after a bit of exploring, there it was, a jungle. So I rushed over there as quick as I could and I collected myself some bamboo and I also came across some watermelons as well so i made sure to collect those because i'll need those for potions as well i found myself a jungle temple which is pretty cool so i headed into the jungle temple yeah there's like a diamond and some iron amazing so i left the jungle went out to explore a little bit more and i found myself a another woodland mansion so i didn't hesitate and i went to go and investigate so i entered the mansion i found myself at this farm uh nothing special really but i did find myself some melons and also some pumpkins. So I decided to collect myself some. So it is now time to head home. So I made myself a way out and I went home. Day 91, I finally arrived home. And the first thing I wanted to do was to make myself a melon farm. So I just made a very, very simple melon farm right here. And also I crafted myself some glycerin melon slices as well. I made myself a few health potions and also I made a few strength potions as well. Day 92 to 94, I wanted to now go back to the nether and collect myself plenty of blaze rods. It is now time. at me so i had to get out of the way it is now time to do damage to the ender dragon but the ender dragon was well too strong it was doing so much damage so i had my strength potion and it was time to end this And there it is. Wow, we did it. We finally defeated the Ender Dragon. I can't believe it.
So I collected myself all the XP and I also wanted to get myself a dragon egg as well. And there it is. And wow, we did it. We finally defeated the Ender Dragon. All I had to do now was to go home. So I finally get home and what I decided to do was to actually make a bit of an area for the dragon egg to go. So I just used a bunch of quartz blocks and all I had to do now was to place in the dragon egg. Wow, there it is. We did it. Day 99, what I decided to do was to go back to the Woodland Mansion. I wanted to get one good look at the Woodland Mansion for the final time. So I headed over to the mansion. Wow, this place looks destroyed. And yeah, just look at this place. There's like nothing left. So I made myself a way up to my old room and yeah, some of this stuff here has survived. Like my bed and a few of my chests right here. But I did find my old pair of leather boots. Uh, that was pretty cool, I guess. And yeah, my farm survived as well. And yeah, just look at all this damage. I wonder who could have done this. In today's video, I have to survive 200 days as a evoker. And this time, I have three new objectives. First, build myself my very own woodland mansion. Second, defeat the wither. And finally, find out who's been lurking around my world. Will I be able to survive 200 days as a evoker in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching to find out. So here we go, our journey begins on day 101. And yes, it is very nice to be back on this world. It's nice to see all the things I've built. But anyways, I wanted to start off this journey by going back to the caves and collecting myself some diamonds so I could make some diamond armor and also some brand new tools. And surprisingly, it didn't take too long, honestly, to get all these diamonds. And with that fortune free, definitely made it a lot more easier to get all these diamonds. So I collected plenty of diamonds and now I think we have enough. So I headed back home and I went to the crafting table and made some new tools and also some armor. Made two new diamond pickaxes as well. Went outside to go and enchant it and I got myself a very good pickaxe. Also enchanted my diamond sword and wow, I got a very good diamond sword. And then I enchanted the rest of my armor and I couldn't believe it. I got protection for on everything. This was amazing. made a diamond block but I needed a place to place it and I thought this looks like a perfect spot to place it so I placed it down and there it is made an armor stand as well so I could display all my new armor and yeah all I need now is some netherite but first I wanted to go back to the nether once again and collect myself some magma creams so I went out searching for a basalt biome and by the next day I found one. So I took out a bunch of magma cubes and I collected some magma creams which was very nice. Made sure to collect uh, plenty of these so I could actually make loads of fire resistant potions. And yeah I think that'll do it. Free a bit enough. So I headed back home after that and I went home and crafted myself so much potions. Made sure to make uh, plenty of these just in case. And finally, I head to the nether once again and it's now time to go and find some ancient debris. So I went out exploring and I found this spot. So I made myself a way down and I went looking for some ancient debris. Okay, I think that'll do it. I think I got enough ancient debris now and I think it's now time to head home. Ah, finally, I get back to the nether portal and I go home and smelt up all the ancient debris. Once I'm waiting for all my ancient debris to be smelted up, why not make a smithing table so I can actually turn my tools into netherite? And there it was, netherite ingots. This was amazing. So I happily turned all my tools into netherite. All I had to do now was to turn my armor into netherite. So I headed up the stairs right here. And wait, what? Who could have done this? I left it right here. There's no way. And then even worse, my diamond block was missing as well. I couldn't believe it. So I panicked and I went looking. I wanted to see if I could find whoever did this. And as I got to the top here, even worse, my ender egg is gone. This was really bad. But maybe, maybe if I go out and explore, maybe I can still find them. So I rushed to my horse and we went out looking. We wanted to find who did this. So I traveled for ages. And then as I got up to this hill, I couldn't believe it. A village 
These villagers, they must have done this. They must have taken all my armor, diamond block, and also my dragon egg. So I didn't hesitate and I started attacking the villagers. This is true, the villagers never to take my stuff again. And also, there was an iron golem. But luckily, he wasn't really a problem, and I easily took him out. And he did drop a few pieces of iron, which was nice. After that, I continued to take out the rest of the village. Hey look, iron armor. It must have been his villagers. They must have taken my armor and destroyed it. I can't believe this. So if they're going to, to destroy my armor, I'm going to destroy their village. So I made a flint and steel, and I set their village on fire. Then. That showed the villagers never to mess with me again. So I searched the entire village to see if I could find my stuff. So I looked absolutely everywhere for it, but I couldn't find it, sadly. Those villagers must have destroyed it all. There was nothing left in the village. So I went back to my horse and we went home. Why would they do this? Why would they take my dragon egg? and also my armor. I don't understand. Later on that day, what I decided to do was to actually go and collect a bunch of wood so I could make some fences and neat up a bit of my farm area. So I placed in a variety of blocks, like some cobblestone, some stone, and also some slabs. And then I placed in a bunch of fences. Also placed in a few leaves around. And also I wanted to decorate this area a bit as well. It looks a bit boring and I wanted to make it look a lot better. And as well, for the next couple of days, I wanted to work on a new watchtower. Already had one watchtower, but I wanted a second one. So I went with a slightly different design. I did use the same materials like wood and also some cobblestone and some stone bricks and also some wooden planks. And yeah, I'm very happy with the design. It looks a lot different and yeah, it looks really cool. Now the roof. I just made it the same as the other ones. Also made a bit of a stairway right here. You gotta have one of these. And there it is the watchtower. That's the watchtower. It's pretty much done. Also added a few pathways around. I wanted to make it look a lot nicer. The next day I finally finished up on the pathway. As I was building the paths, I noticed my horse. He needed a better place to live. So I built him his very own stable. Now I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at building uh, stables, honestly, but I did try my best and I think it turned out somewhat okay. So I took my pet horse to his new home and the good thing is he was really happy and there he is the stable is now complete now all of that out the way i wanted to now go back to the end and collect myself the elytra so i went out exploring found the stronghold jumped back through and i made it to the other side all i needed now was some ender pearls so i got myself a few ender pearls and there it was the end gate so i made a way up jump through and surprisingly there was an end city right here which was um pretty cool i guess so i made a way over there ender powered across and entered the end city found myself some really nice loot right here but i was interrupted by some shulkers which was not very nice so i took care of them and i made sure it was clear and then i opened up the chests and i found myself some decent loot honestly but i wasn't finished yet so i made a way up and i collected the dragon head and then there it was the elytra so i took it as shulker looted up the chest right here which had some decent loot honestly and now the elytra there it is wow we did it so i headed out of there and i found some chorus flower so I collected that because I actually wanted to plant some of this in. It's time to head home now, so I made a way up and jump back through. I got home, made some sugar boxes, dyed one of them red and also blue so I could tell which one's which. Planted in some chorus flower right here. And I also noticed my horse. Uh, he was a bit lonely, so what I decided to do was to get him his very own friend. So I headed out and I went looking. After a bit of exploring, there was a horse. So what I was to do was to actually tame this horse right here. And after a bit of trying, there it was. And there it is, our horse has a friend. And yeah, this horse uh, looks amazing. So I finally arrived home and now my pet horse has a friend. He was super happy. 
The next day I chopped down a bunch of trees, flattened up the ground a little bit because I actually wanted to make a bit of a sugarcane farm right here. Very simple little sugarcane farm. I just wanted to get myself loads of paper. Once I'm waiting for the sugarcane to grow up, why not do a bit of fishing? So I did. The next day I collected some sugarcane and made some fireworks so I could actually fly around my world. Once I'm flying around, I thought, why not? Let's go exploring. Let's see what we could find. And I found this abandoned village. Uh, surprisingly, it didn't have any houses here, which was a bit odd, but there was loads of zombie villagers. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. Then as I got up to this hill, there was a bunch of hay right here. And also there was a Badlands biome. Uh, this was interesting. I've never really seen a Badlands biome like this before. And it looked rather interesting. So I collected a bunch of terracotta because I actually might use some of this in my builds. And why not? Might as well collect some red sand as well. As I was exploring and looking around, I noticed off in the distance there was a mine shaft. So I headed over there and entered the mine shaft. So I jumped down right here and surprisingly there was a name tag right here. And as well, there was like so much gold here. So I made sure to collect plenty of it. And then as I was flying through the skies, there was a village. Hmm, rather interesting. But I wasn't going to burn it down the village this time, but I did take all their hay. You could always have spare food. Finally, day 49, I arrived home. That was an adventure, and it was nice to be back home. So what I decided to do now was to actually make a bit of a desert. So I placed in a bunch of red sand, and I made a very, very simple desert. Also did a bit of decorating. You gotta add decoration. Day 50, I wanted to now work on a bit of a mansion. So I cleared out a massive space right here, destroying all the trees and also flattening up all the ground. And yeah, it definitely looks a lot different now, but I also needed to collect a bunch of dark oak wood. So I did. So I headed to the forest and I collected loads of wood. Hey look, a another village. Yeah, I'm not interested. And surprisingly, this took a very long time. I'm not very good at building mansions, honestly, and it definitely took a lot longer than I expected. But anyways, I just used a few dark oak planks, logs, and yeah, um, this is going to take ages. And just like that, that looks a lot better. That's the front done. I just had to place in a bunch of wood. And for the flooring, I went with birch wood. I had plenty of this, so why not use it? Made a second floor, so I had it upstairs. What's a house without windows? I don't know. So I made put of windows so I could see out but I needed a way up as well so I made a very very simple stairway right here and finally I made some windows and placed them in right here after that I placed in a bunch of red carpets because woodland mansions have red carpets but you can't forget about leaves I made sure to place these in as well so it was a bit dark so I also added a few lanterns around and there it is really the mansion is uh, I would say pretty much done and I'm actually very happy of this design. It looks amazing. But I almost forgot I had to place in my bed and also some storage. So I just placed in a few chests right here. And there it is. It's 100% uh, done. Ah, the next day I wanted to now make a brand new set of armor. Because the villagers stole my armor last time. So I headed back to the ravine and I went looking for some diamonds. I found this cave which is pretty cool honestly. And surprisingly I actually did find some diamonds. I was very surprised. So I went around looking for some more as well. I didn't have quite enough just yet. So I explored the caves and the ravine. But that wasn't really working so I went digging in a straight line again. That's a good thing I did that because I found some more diamonds. Alright, we have enough diamonds now. It is time to head back home and make myself a new diamond set. There it is. I make a full set of diamond armor. Finally. All I had to do now was to go and enchant all this armor. So I enchanted my leggings and also my chest plate. But sadly, I didn't have enough levels for the rest of my armor. So I headed back to the nether and I went to go and get loads more quartz. I made sure to collect plenty of these so I had plenty of levels. So I rushed back to the nether portal and I went home, enchanted the rest of my armor and I combined my old armor with my new armor to make the ultimate armor. And then I turned it all into netherite. Now we have netherite armor. Wow.
The next day I was getting low on food. I needed some more food, so I headed to my farm and harvest up all my potatoes. As well, I was thinking, I don't really have much farms, do I? So I thought I'll make a chicken farm. Used a bunch of uh, birch wood and also some dark oak wood as well. And I'm very happy with this design. And I also placed in some chests and also some hoppers so I could collect all the eggs right here. But what's a chicken farm without chickens? So I headed out and I went looking for some chickens. And surprisingly, I did find some, which was amazing. Amazing. So I brought him back to his new home, but he needed a friend. So I went out looking and I found one. So I brought the chicken back to his new home and there it is. The chicken farm is done. Later on that day, I wanted to actually get myself a looting free sword. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. I ran out of levels as I was going through, through all these books and trying to get myself a fortune free sword. So you know what I did? I went back to the nether once again and went to go and collect a bunch more quartz. But anyways, I made sure to collect plenty of levels. And then off of the distance, I could see a bastion. Uh, this was amazing. So I headed over there and went to go and loot it up. Went around exploring a little bit and I could see there was some gold. Um, I needed loads of gold. As I was looking around, I found this secret room. I couldn't believe it. There was two chests right here, which was amazing. So I opened it up and I found some decent loot. Day 79, I was heading back home, but I ran into some glowstone. So I collected myself a few pieces. There it was. I couldn't believe it, a looting free diamond sword. This was amazing. It also had sharpness four and knockback as well. So you know what I did? I combined it with my other sword to make the ultimate sword. The next day I thought, okay, my place, I needed to spice it up a little bit. Uh, I had plenty of emeralds, so I made some emerald blocks and I placed them in right here. And yeah, we now have a looting free sword. So I wanted to go back to the fortress and collect some wither skeleton heads. And then as I got up to this wither skeleton right here, I took him out and there it was, he dropped a head. And for some reason after that, the wither skeletons, they wasn't really spawning in too much. I don't know why. So this took a little longer than I expected. But finally, I took out this wither skeleton right here and he dropped a second head. And there it is, we now have enough heads. On my way home, I stumbled across a crimson forest. So I collected myself some crimson wood and also some stream lights as well. Finally got home and made some strength potions and also some healing potions as well. I made sure to make plenty of these, I would need these. And yeah, I'm sure we have enough potions. But I also needed to collect some apples. So I headed to the nearest swamp and I went around collecting loads of apples. And I'm now ready to take out the wither. It's now time. It is now time. It is now time to go and defeat the wither. So I gathered all the stuff I needed for my chests, said goodbye to my horses, and I also said goodbye to my fish. And then I headed out. After a bit of exploring, I found this spot. This looked like a perfect spot to fight the wither. So I placed in all the salt sand, had a strength potion, and it was time to take on the wither. There it is, the wither. So I backed up and I shot the wither with my crossbow. He was not happy whatsoever. And also, he was so fast. So I had to keep moving, but I also had to keep shooting him with my crossbow because I had to do damage if I wanted to defeat the wither. The wither was doing so much damage, I couldn't believe it. So I had to keep eating my golden apples. I couldn't believe how much damage he was doing. And then I didn't even notice. As I was trying to fight the wither, he took all my hearts away. But luckily, I had that totem of undying, which saved my life. Wow, that was close. As I got up to this hill right here, I could see off in the distance, there it was, the old woodland mansion. I had a plan. So I headed over to the woodland mansion. I thought it'd be so much more easier but it didn't work. I couldn't reach the wither and it was doing so much more damage to me. I had to think of another plan. Then I thought, okay, I have to find a cave. And I did. I found this cave right here. So I went down into the cave. I couldn't believe it. The wither was also coming down into the cave as well. So I headed deeper into the cave. I had no more potions and only one golden apple left. So I healed back up and I had to do this. I had to take out the wither. In. I took my final swings and there it is. The wither has been defeated. Wow, we did it. 
so I collected the Neverstar and I headed out the caves and I wanted to go back home. Finally, I got home and I made the beacon and there it is. So right outside my home, I placed in a bunch of gold and I finally placed in the beacon. And I was not finished just yet. I wanted to pit on speed so I could run very fast. So I just did circles around the beacon for some reason. After that I placed in a bunch of black stone slabs and yeah it went very well with the gold honestly which looks very nice. Uh, just made it very simple right here and yeah it really looks really cool. But you know what doesn't look cool? This stairway right here. So I'm going to replace it with a brand new one. That looks better. Stone brick stairs. Place in a few uh, oak logs and for the floor I thought I'd use a bit more birch. And yeah, I'm very happy with this stairway right here. And I'll say, it definitely looks a lot more better. Day 190 to 192, I wanted to go back to the Badlands biome and collect some more terracotta. Also collected a bit of black dye as well, because I would need this. And I made sure to collect plenty of brown terracotta. On my way home, I found some flowers. So I collected myself a few. And I also went to the river and collected a bunch of gravel and also loads of sand. So that I could actually make a bunch of concrete because I wanted to use this for my build. And yeah, um, I don't think I've told you guys what I'm actually building. I'm actually building a statue of myself. And I'm going to be 100% honest. I'm not very good at building statues. I did try, I'm going to be honest, I did try, but it didn't really work out as I expected it to. Yeah, it doesn't look good at all, honestly. Please don't judge me. And we're coming close to the end of our journey, so I thought I'd put all my armor on display. I wasn't doing anything really, and for the next couple of days I wanted to uh, take it chill. I didn't want to do much. So I put all my armor onto this armor stand, and there it is. Our armor looks amazing. Also thought I'd make a few item frames and put all my tools and equipment on these item frames. And yeah, I just wanted to take it easy for the next couple of days. I headed outside and I wanted to look at everything that I've built, like my mansion and also the stable and also the other stuff I've built over these 200 days. Wow, we've done a lot. So I headed up these stairs right here and I thought, okay, there's really no need of having this anymore. I don't have an end egg and there's no need. I started tearing it down and I had a second thought. I thought, there's no way, there's no way. The villagers couldn't have destroyed my dragon egg. So I placed it all back in, it had to be out there somewhere, it had to be. I thought, okay, maybe I can have one last look. Maybe with a bit of luck, I can actually find it. Who knows, maybe it's out there somewhere. So I rushed back to my mansion and I went to go and pack up a bunch of food and equipment that I might need. So I just made a plenty of bread and I placed it in this shulker box right here. Also made a few brand new tools, just in case I might need these. Is there a point of me looking for this? I mean, we're so close to the end and I don't know if I even find it, but I guess it doesn't hurt to look. So I said goodbye to my horses and I also wanted to say goodbye to my pet fish, just in case I might never see them again.
Oh, I've been looking absolutely everywhere. I don't think I'm ever going to find my stuff. I've come so far, I can't go back now. I've got to keep searching. Oh, I've got to take a break. I've got to rest for a while. Oh, my feet are starting to hurt. Let me take a rest at this tree. Wait, wait, what? What is that? Wait, what is this thing? It, it looks like a beacon or some sort. Yeah, wait, let me head over and have a look. Finally, I can actually see what, what is this thing? Wait, what? A beacon? How is there a beacon? And they have a watchtower as well? What is this place? This place is, this place is insane. This can't be right. It's a whole civilized village. I can't believe it. Look at this place. They have their own village here. And also they have a, their own enchantment table. What is this? And also villagers? There's no way. How? How is this possible? I can't believe it. They have a nether portal, houses, and also farms right here. This house. What is this place? But there's no one around. I've looked everywhere and I can't seem to find anyone. Surely there's got to be someone around here. Surely. Like, wait, what's this place? What's down here? Should I head down there or not? I don't know. Surely it won't hurt if I have a look. Hello? Anybody here? Um, okay. Storage room. Wait, what's, what's this? Uh, anybody here? Hello? Whoa, this place looks cool. Wait, what's that on the end down there? Wait, what is that? Is that my stuff? There's no way. I can't believe it. My armor, my diamond block, and my dragon egg are right here. This is amazing. Wow, I found my stuff, finally. Wait, wait, what was that? Wait, what? What? A villager? This must be the guy who stole everything from me and took all my stuff. I can't believe it. Wait, what was that noise? Wait, wait what? No. In today's video, I have to survive 100 days as a wandering trader. And also, I have three objectives. First, get myself some pet llamas. Second, build my very own woodland camp. And finally, defeat the ender dragon. Can I survive 100 days as a wandering trader in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching and find out. So here we go, our journey begins on day one. And as you can see, we're on top of this mountain. Anyways, I headed down the mountain and I went to go and get myself some wood. So I punched down this tree with my bare hands. And all I have to do now is to find a bit of stone. And surprisingly, I found some right here, which was amazing. So I uh, quickly made myself a wooden pickaxe and I gathered some stone. I only wanted a few bits of stone, just enough to make a few stone tools. Hey, look at Apple. Yes, I found my first bits of food. And what I decided to do was to uh, gather a few flowers. Maybe I can trade these with uh, some of the villagers. So I headed out and uh, just look at this terrain. All these mountains look uh, very nice. And then, as I made it up this hill right here, there it was, a village. This was super exciting. So I headed over there and went to go and say hello to all the villagers. I approached this farmer right here and I wanted to see what he traded. Yeah, sadly I didn't have enough materials. Anyways, I found this building right here. So I entered and I could see there were some bookshelves. This was truly amazing. So when the villagers weren't looking, I took some of their bookshelves and also some of their equipment as well. I'm sure they won't mind. So I headed outside and I could see there was some iron on the ground. I suppose there was uh, once an iron golem here before. Oh well. So I gathered some hay around the village and I went to go and trade with some of the villagers, getting myself some emeralds. Okay, I think it's now time we uh, leave the village and head out and explore. So I said my final goodbyes and I headed out. Stumbled across some uh, sugarcane, which was uh, really nice. So I gathered that and I could see it was getting dark really quickly. This was not good. So I had to camp up for the night. So I made a campfire and now we have fire. Anyways, I think it's now time we get a good night's rest. So I went to sleep. So it was the next day. So I packed up my things like my crafting table and bed, said goodbye to the camp and headed out. And I could see it was a lovely sunny morning. So why not go exploring? So that's what I did. I stumbled across a uh, swamp biome, which was pretty interesting. And then I found a tiger biome. I was super excited. And also found myself some berries. I made sure to collect these because uh, yeah, I needed food. Hey, and also, why don't we build our camp right here? It looks like a perfect spot. And I could see it was getting dark really quickly. But before I go to bed, I wanted to head out and go back to the swamp because I wanted to get myself some slimes. So I headed to the swamp and took out a few slimes. 
And I also, I might as well get myself some string as well. So I uh, fought some spiders and got myself some string. And then I headed home on day three and made some leads. So I made some leads and why not go exploring a little bit? I want to see what else I can find. So I head out and wouldn't you look at this view? It looks awesome. On day four, as I was climbing up this mountain, I heard a strange noise. I was a little confused on what it could be, so I went to go and investigate, making a way down the mountain, and I heard it again. So I turned around and uh, there it was, two baby llamas. I couldn't believe it. So I quickly made a way down and I wondered, I couldn't leave them here. I couldn't leave these baby llamas here on their own. They wouldn't survive. So I'd have to take them with me. So that's what I did. So we headed out and we went exploring. Anyways, after a bit of exploring, I stumbled across a uh, second village. As I approached the village, I could see there was hardly nothing around. But I did find this animal pen, so I decided to put my llamas in here for now, so I could go around the village and explore. So I went around trading with some of the villagers, and also still in, I mean, taking some of their stuff. Hey look, a never portal. And there's also a chest. So I opened it up and found some really good loot. And then, on day 5, I could see there was a villager trying to take my llamas. So I rushed over there the quick as I could. So I grabbed my pet llamas and we headed out. I couldn't believe this. We finally get home on day 6, and don't you guys think it's now time we make a bit of a home? So I get started by removing some of the blocks like some of the old mossy cobblestone. So I just used some spruce wood and also decided to use some stone. I wanted this place to look rather natural. And then as I was building my house, I turned around and I could see one of my llamas have grown up. Well, that was quick. Anyways, I went back to building and I decided to build a bit of a wall right here. And I almost forgot, I made sure to add some leaves in as well. You can't forget about the leaves. And finally, there it is. And I have to say, with all that stone and uh, spruce wood, really looks nice. And before you ask about the llamas, I just moved them over here. I thought they'd be safer here. Day 16. Don't you guys think it's now time we go on a bit of a minding trip? I think it is. So I made some pickaxes and I headed to the caves. As I approached the caves, I found some iron, which was very nice. And also I found a uh, mine shaft, which was great. You know what you find in mine shafts? You find mine carts. So I opened up the chest and hey, I found a golden apple. I'll take that. Even better, I found myself a mob spawner. So I opened up a chest and I found a music disc, which was quite nice. After that, I decided to go and find some diamonds. And surprisingly, I actually found some, which was amazing. So I happily collected all those and I went looking for more. And wouldn't you know it, I found some more. As I had all these diamonds, I thought, why not? Let's make a diamond pickaxe so I can actually get some obsidian. So that's what I did. I made a pickaxe and collected a few bits of obsidian for a nether portal and also for the enchantment table. Day 19, I finally arrive home and I make the enchantment table, of course, and also some diamond tools and finally some iron armor so that I would be very safe from any mobs. And there it is. We now have a full set of iron armor, which is great. And then I noticed that I was getting hungry very quickly. Uh, I needed a farm. So what I decided to do was to make myself a potato farm. So I cleared out a bit of space and you guessed it, I used some spruce wood as well. Placing in a few uh, spruce logs, some spruce fences, flattening up all the ground and finally planting my potatoes. And also, once I was building my potato farm, I thought why not, let's do a bit of decorating. So I added a few new paths around and also some new lamps. And I have to say, this place is getting along very well. And to uh, round up the day, I decided to uh, do a bit of fishing, you know. I like to do fishing time to time. Day 22, I made some carpets. And what I decided to do was to go and change the llama's colour. So for the white llama, I went with a red and yellowy type. And for the brown llama, I went with a yellowy gold. And yeah, that definitely looks a lot better. I think it's now time we go on an adventure. So I grabbed my llamas and we headed out. So we headed out into the unknown and we went exploring. And then the next day I was traveling and as I turned around, I couldn't believe my very own eyes. I could see the village has been destroyed. So I approached the village and I could see it has been set on fire. So I went around the village to see if there was any survivors. 
and sadly there wasn't. Anyways, I have to continue exploring. So I head out and I stumble across some llamas. Uh, yeah, this was a bad idea. I should have never approached these llamas. In seconds, I was swarmed by loads of llamas. Just look how many there is. There's so many. Anyways, we lost all the llamas. And after a bit of exploring, I can see off in the distance. There was a building. I was a little confused. So I went to go and investigate. And I could see it was a pillager outpost. Great. Whoever lived here had a pet horse. And also they had a enchantment table as well. Hey, wait, is that diamond armor? It is. Who leaves diamond armor like this? Well, don't mind if I take this. I'm sure this will be worth a few emeralds. So I gathered all the diamond armor and I also found myself a diamond block. So I collected that as well. And then I was ambushed by pillagers. This was not good. So I had to defend myself. I got my shield and sword and I started attacking the villagers. Taking each pillager out one by one. They must be guarding something, surely. Wait, what? A dragon egg? There's no way. This would be worth a fortune. I would get myself so many emeralds. So I quickly gathered up the ender egg and I couldn't believe it. This thing would be worth so many emeralds. But I couldn't stay here too long, just in case the pillagers came back. So I made a run for it, back to my llamas. And then we headed out and we continue exploring. And the next day, as I turned this corner right here, I could see there was a woodland mansion. But this was no normal woodland mansion. Oh no, as I approached the woodland mansion, I could see it has been destroyed. Someone or something has set this on fire. So I went to go and investigate. I entered the woodland mansion and yeah, this place was destroyed. So I uh, went to go and investigate and see if I could find anything useful. So I made a way up to the top of the uh, woodland mansion and I found this room. It's sad to see it like this, all burnt down. I wonder who could have done this. Anyways, that was it really. So I headed back down to my llamas and we continue exploring. And then, on day 38, I stumbled across a new village. I was super excited, so I headed over there. And as I approached this village, something didn't feel right. And I was right. This was no normal village. Like, just look. They have their own villager farm right here. And also all these buildings. So I went around investigating. And then, as I turned around, I could see there was a villager. So I went to go and say hi. So I approached the villager and he could see that I had all this diamond armor, this diamond block, and also this dragon egg. And he offered to trade it with me for some emeralds. So I happily accepted that offer. So I gave him the diamond armor, diamond block, and also the dragon egg. And he told me that all the emeralds were in his house. This was great. Um, I'm guessing this is his house. Let me enter and find out. Okay, there's a chest. Uh, there's a few animals. I'm gonna open up a chest and see. So I opened up a chest. And I couldn't believe my very own eyes. There it was. All these emeralds. This was truly amazing. So I left the house and I could see it was getting dark very quickly. So I had to go home. So I went back to my llamas and before I left, the villager told me he wondered where I got all this loot from. And I told him I found it as a pillager outpost not too far away from here. And then he had this uh, evil look in his eye. I wonder why. Anyways, I headed out of there and uh, on my way home, I stumbled across uh, a ruins never portal with some nice loot. And also I decided to get some obsidian. Finally, we arrive home. Wow, what an adventure that was. Don't you guys think it's now time we make a never portal? I think it is. So I placed in all the obsidian and lit it up. And there it is, the never portal. So what am I waiting for? I headed through and got through to the other side. As I got through to the other side, there wasn't much really, but there was a bastion, which was nice. So I happily headed over there and went to go and loot up the bastion, finding myself some really nice stuff. But that's not all. Oh no, I went around the bastion once again and found some other loot. This time, finding a mending pickaxe, which was incredible. But our journey isn't over just yet. Oh no, I wanted to go and find another fortress. And luckily, after a bit of time, I found one. So I took down the blazers and collected some blaze rods. Hey, and I also found myself some diamonds, which was nice. All right, before we get home, I wanted to go to the warped forest and collect some ender pearls. So that's what I did. I went around taking down all the endermen. And now finally, we can go home. Ah, I get home and I make some brewing stands. And of course, we need a place to make these potions. So I cleared out a bit of space and I thought this looks like a perfect spot to make my potions. 
but this time I wanted to use some other blocks, so I used a bit of oak wood. Instead of making walls, I thought I'd use some glass instead. And for the roof, I just used some stone stairs and also some spruce stairs. And then I uh, made myself some health potions. I would definitely need these. Hey, I almost forgot about my enchantment table. I think it's time we go and find some bookshelves. So I made some eyes of ender and I headed to the stronghold. Surely it can't be far away now. Is that the stronghold? Yes, it is. So I made a way down and entered the stronghold. And to my surprise, I could see this was a library. This was great. So I happily collected a bunch of bookshelves and I made sure to collect uh, plenty of these. You know, I would need these. And then the next day, as I was going through the stronghold, there it was, the end portal. Wow, there it is. So I placed in all the eyes of Ender, but sadly, I didn't have enough. I need five more. Well, I think that was a, a nice little trip. I think it's time to head home. So I get home and make a bunch of bookshelves, of course. And then I make a place for my uh, enchantment table to go, you know? But of course, knowing me, I built this uh, enchantment table room on the other side of my base. So I spent the next couple of days constructing my very own bridge. Now I have to say, I'm not really uh, a professional at building bridges, but this does look pretty cool. What do you guys think? Let me know. Anyways, after that, I went to go and enchant my pickaxe. And yeah, I just got on breaking free, which was not good. Anyways, I enchanted my sword and got sweeping edge, which was nice. So I enchanted another pickaxe and I could see there was fortune too. So I went with that. And yeah, my armor is not looking that good. I think it's time we go for an upgrade. So I headed back to the caves and I went looking for some diamonds. Finally, the next day, I found a few. So I used my Fortune 2 pickaxe to get myself some diamonds. So pretty much I spent the whole day collecting some diamonds. I made sure to collect uh, plenty of these. So I had enough for a full set of diamond armor and some new tools. So I finally get home and make myself a full set of diamond armor and also i made some tools as well and there it is we now have a full set of diamond armor yes so i went to go and enchant my pickaxe and i got fortune free surprisingly so i went to go and combine that with my mending pickaxe to make the ultimate pickaxe and then i did a bit of farming collected myself loads of potatoes and if you guys didn't know there was a village not too far away from my base which was nice and i could see this guy here had a woodland mansion map so i thought why not Let's get myself one. So I happily purchased a woodland mansion map. But before I go and uh, take down this woodland mansion, I wanted to get myself some more arrows. So I headed back to the nether and traded with some of the piglins. And then something bad really happened. As I was heading home, a ghast shot my nether portal and broke it. But luckily I came prepared and I had a fire charge. Now it is time to take out the Woodland Mansion. So I headed out and went traveling for days and days. I was so surprised on how long this took me and how far away the mansion really was. And finally, there it was, the Woodland Mansion. So I didn't hesitate and I entered the Woodland Mansion. As I entered, I took down this zombie and then I took down the illagers. And I have to say, these illagers do serious damage. But luckily, knowing me, I was able to take them out one by one. After that, I went around the mansion and then this happened. I was attacked by this illager, which did serious damage. I panicked and I made a run for it. I couldn't believe it. One more hit and it would be over completely. But luckily, I was able to throw my potions down, which saved my life. And whoa. That was really close. Anyways, I healed back up and I went around the mansion. And surprisingly, I found some name tags. I would take these so I could actually name my llamas. Anyways, I went around the entire mansion. But for some reason, I could not find any of the evokers anywhere. For some reason, they wasn't here. There was this chicken though. So I guess it's uh, time to leave the mansion then. On my way home, I stumbled across uh, some horses. So I decided to tame one. So I tamed this uh, brown horse right here and then we headed home together. So I get home and it's now time to name my llamas. So for the white llama, I went with Lola and for the brown llama, I went with Wanda. So I went outside to go and name them. And yeah, I could tell they was very happy. This was awesome. 
Speaking of our llamas, I think it's time we make them their very own home. So I just used some spruce wood, and also for the roof, I went with uh, spruce slabs. But of course, you can't forget about some decoration. So I made sure to place in a few uh, lanterns around. And here it is. Uh, what do you guys think? I think it looks awesome. With all these lanterns and all this spruce wood, definitely looks really nice. And I could tell straight away, they was very happy. Just look at their faces. They look very happy. Anyways, all of that out of the way, I now wanted to go back to the nether and get myself some ancient debris and also a load of levels. So I made sure to collect uh, quite a bit of ancient debris, honestly. I needed enough for a full set of uh, armor, so I went around collecting loads. Before I go home, I also wanted to go and find a bastion because I wanted to get myself loads more gold. And wouldn't you know it, there was so much gold. So I collected up all the gold. But of course, you can't leave a bastion without looting it up. So I went to go and loot it up and I found this lone stone, which was nice. But I was ambushed by a piglin. Anyways, I was able to quickly grab the lone stone and head home. So I finally get home and place in the lone stone. And I also decided to go around and use up all these maps so I could actually mark out my uh, surroundings. And I have to say, this took a lot longer than I expected. But finally, by the next day, there it was. And this is cool, you can see all around my base. Straight after that, I made some netherite. And of course, I got to turn all my armor and diamond pickaxe into netherite as well. So, that's what I did. And there it is. So I think it's now time we use up all those levels. So I went to my enchantment table and enchanted my netherite armor, getting myself protection free on pretty much everything. And there it was. We now have fully enchanted netherite armor. Ah, back to the nether it seems. So I went back to the nether and collected some more ender pearls. I needed these and I'll also need some blaze powder. So I found a new fortress and I got myself some more blaze rods. Oh, finally, it's time to head home and take down the Ender Dragon. It is now time. It is now time to go and defeat the Ender Dragon. So I gather all the things I need for my chest, all my armor, potions, and all the equipment I would need for this fight. And then I went to go and say goodbye to all my pets, like my horse, and also my llamas. And I could see they were really sad, but this had to be done. I had to go and defeat the Ender Dragon. So I said my final goodbyes and I headed to the stronghold. As I got to the stronghold, there it was, the end portal. So I used up all my eyes of Ender to light up the portal. So I didn't hesitate and I jumped through. As I got through to the other side, there she was, the Ender Dragon. But I knew what I had to do. I had to take down all the end crystals. So I used my crossbow to do that. And luckily, my shots were on point. And as well, like usual, I could tell the Ender Dragon was not happy. She instantly charged at me, so I had to run. Anyways, I continued to take out the rest of the End Crystals. And whoa, the Ender Dragon got pretty close there. Anyways, I decided to go in and collect a bit of Dragon Breath. And then finally, the last End Crystal. And there it was. All the End Crystals have been destroyed. All we have to do now is take down the Ender Dragon. This is it. It is now time to finish this and take down the Ender Dragon. I took my final swings and there it was. Wow. We did it. And there it is. Wow, we did it. We defeated the Ender Dragon. But before I went home, I wanted to uh, collect the Ender Egg. So that's what I did. And um, just look at this place. This place is insane. Anyways, it is now time to head home. Day 99, we finally arrive home and I think it's now time we make a bit of an area for my dragon egg to go. So I use a bit of endstone, also some obsidian, and of course you can't forget about quartz. And also some quartz stairs, which looks very nice. 
and I thought I'll try something different and add some uh, fences right here. And finally, on day 100, it's time to place in the dragon egg. There it is. Wow, we did it. Hey, and I almost forgot about the dragon breath, so I made sure to place that in as well. In today's video, I have to survive 100 days as a zombie villager. <sighs> And also, I have three objectives. First, build my very own abandoned village. Second, take down a woodland mansion. And finally, defeat the ender dragon. Can I survive these 100 days as a zombie villager in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching and find out. So here we go, our journey begins on day one. And the first thing I noticed, I was in this abandoned house. So I decided to head outside and get a bit of fresh air. And the second I headed outside, I was set on fire by the sun. This was not good, oh no. But I needed to make a run for it to this other house. So I did, and I also noticed that there was some wheat and I needed this for food. So I had to make my very own tunnel leading to this wheat. So I happily collected up some wheat, made a crafting table and then made some fresh bread. I was now very happy. So I healed back up and I made another run for it to this other house. Luckily, I didn't take any damage, but then I found a chest with some potatoes. I was truly amazed. Anyways, I gathered up a bit more wheat and then headed to this other house and collected up a bit of wood because I wanted to make a wooden pickaxe. So I made a wooden pickaxe and then collected up some stone so I could actually make some stone tools, like an ax and also a pickaxe. Very nice. Anyways, I went to this other house and found some bookshelves. So I happily collected a few of these because I'll need these. And I was thinking, why don't I just sit in a pool of water and wait for the sun to set? So that's what I did. And just like that, it is now nighttime. Perfect. So I went around at nighttime, taking down a few cows. And also I stumbled across my friends, which was quite nice. Anyways, my journey continues across the lands. And then I could see you from the distance. There was a village. I knew what I had to do. I had to take down the villagers. As I was making a way over to the village, I could see there was an iron golem. I had to watch out for him. But luckily, I stuck past the iron golem and then I went around the village taking down these villagers. And then, as I took this village right here, I turned around and there he was. The iron golem. I kind of panicked and uh, luckily he didn't take me out, which was good. Anyways, I continued to go around the village to see what else I could find. And I found this farm. So I gathered up a bit more food, like some potatoes, carrot, and also some wheat. I'll need this. Hey, and also I found a blacksmith. So I happily entered the blacksmith and I found some pretty nice loot. Oh, I could also see it was getting morning pretty quickly. So I happily watched the sunrise. And then I thought, why don't I just go to the caves? So I happily entered this cave and found some materials like some coal, some copper, and also a bit of iron. And I'll need this iron for some iron armor and iron tools, of course. After that, I made a iron bucket and collected some water. And you might be asking, why do I need this water bucket? Well, on my way through the caves, I found an axolotl and I wanted to keep him as my very own pet. So I headed down right here and collected up the axolotl. Anyways, I gathered up a bit more iron and then there it was some diamonds. So I happily headed down there and collected up these diamonds. I was now happy. And the good thing was, I got myself like four diamonds, which is pretty cool. Well then, it's time to leave the caves and head back to base. And I got back to the abandoned village and I was thinking, well, this looks like a perfect spot to build my base. So I placed in my furnace, crafting table, and also some chests. So I could store all my items, of course. And also I was getting quite hungry. So I decided to make my very own potato farm. Nothing special just to get me started, you know? So I planted in some potatoes, some carrots, and also some wheat seeds. And yeah, very simple little farm, but I'm happy. Okay, this over here looks like a perfect spot to build my base, uh, but I would need loads of materials. So I went back to the abandoned village and collected up some of these mossy cobblestone right here. I went around the entire village, collected up loads of this mossy cobblestone. And then on day four, I went to the swamp and decided to collect up some of this clay because I needed this for bricks and stuff 
and I also made some shears and collected up some uh, some vines because I'll need these. And then finally, I get back home and start construction on my base. Um, yeah, I really like how this base turned out. I think it looks pretty cool. I'll give you guys a little tour right here. So coming up through this way, we have uh, our stairway, of course. And we enter the house, uh, we have all our furnaces, chests, and all our storage. I really like the look of this house, I think it looks amazing. On day 10, I wanted to uh, check up on my farm and see how it was doing, and it was doing well. I can see all the potatoes have grown up, so I collected up all the potatoes, and also decided to make a diamond pickaxe, because I wanted this diamond pickaxe to get myself some obsidian. So I headed to the caves, collected myself some obsidian. Uh, made sure to collect a few bits because I'll need this for a nether portal. Uh, got enough obsidian, so I headed back home. And uh, before I made the nether portal, I would need to collect some flint. So I did. Then finally, I built the nether portal. And there it was. So I lit it up. And I didn't hesitate. And I jumped through. And as I got through to the other side, I could see it was very misty. And as I turned around, there it was the nether fortress so i collected up a few bones before entering the fortress uh, because i would need these for my potato farm anyways i entered the fortress and went exploring i found some nether water and also some soul sand i would need this so i made sure to collect up plenty of this stuff and then I went to go and take down this blaze and I have to be careful because these blazes could do serious damage and also these wither skeletons could do serious damage as well. I was hit by a wither skeleton and he did some serious damage. Just look how much damage that takes. But luckily I was okay and I continued to take down some more blazes. And on day 12 my journey continues through the nether and I found a bastion. So I happily entered this bastion and I couldn't believe my very own eyes. I could see there was loads of gold and also a chest. So I opened up this chest and found some amazing loot, like this fire aspect diamond sword. Anyways, I gathered up some of the gold and then I went around the uh, bastion collecting up some more uh, loot. Finding myself some pretty nice stuff, if I do say so myself. Anyways, I arrive home and I now need to build a potion area. Um, over here is not really a good spot. Um, you know what? I'm gonna build over here. I think this is a good spot. So I started placing in some bricks, some granite, and uh, yeah, some decoration as well, which looks pretty nice. I'm really happy of this area. I think it looks amazing. But then, as I was just decorating my area up, I noticed that there were some pillagers, and I was wondering what these pillagers looking for. So I let some minutes pass, and I wanted to go and catch up to those pillagers and tell them what they was looking for, but I was too late, sadly. I couldn't find them anywhere. Oh well, I guess I'll go back home. Anyways, I get home and I decided to make some fire resistant potions because I needed these uh, so I could uh, be protected from the sun. So I happily made about three of them, which should be plenty. And I have to say, I really do like the look of this area. I think it looks amazing. And then I was thinking, well, I kind of forgot about my axolotl. And um, luckily there was actually a pond right outside my home. And I thought this was like a perfect spot to place in my axolotl. But I did a bit of decorating first, making it look a lot better. It is now time to place in my axolotl. And I could tell he was very happy. Just look at the smile on his face. Well, well, I think it's now time we go on a mining trip. So I made some iron pickaxes and I have to say my armor is not looking that good. So I headed to the caves and um, yeah, I found this ravine. So I headed down into the ravine and went to go and find myself some materials, like some iron and also a bunch of gold, which was pretty nice. But then I found some diamonds. I was truly amazed. So I collected up these diamonds and also I collected up some lapis which is pretty nice. I'll need this for enchanting. But funny enough, I found this cave. And as I turned around, I could see there was a mob spawner. So I headed over there and I found some chests with some nice loot, like a golden apple, a bunch of gunpowder, and also some music discs, which is pretty nice. Anyways, I went around the caves, continue exploring, and I found some amethyst crystals. I'll need this for a spyglass. Wow. That's a lot of crystals. Uh, so I collected a few of those and then I spent the next couple of days just looking for some diamonds. Uh, I kind of wanted to make a full set of diamond armor, so I spent a little while looking for some diamonds. Alright, alright, that should be plenty of diamonds. It's time to head back to base. 
And then, on my way back home, I couldn't believe it. I could see my base has been set on fire, so I rushed over there the quickest I could. I was panicking. I didn't know what to expect. And as I got over there, I could see those pillagers. I couldn't believe it. The pillagers have come back and destroyed my base. Why would they have done this? So I took down all the pillagers one by one. And they also destroyed the inside of my base. Just look at it. It's been destroyed completely. And then, as I was looking at all the damage the pillagers did, and then as I turned around, there they was. All pillagers. In seconds, I was outnumbered by all these pillagers. So I had to make a run for it. So I broke these blocks right here and left my base. Wow, that was pretty close. And then I continued to take down the rest of the pillagers. And then finally, I took down the final pillager. I can't believe it. All my hard work has been destroyed by these pillagers. I wonder why. But then even worse, I noticed that my axolotl was gone. How could this be? They've taken my axolotl. Why would they do this? I will get my revenge. I'll show these pillagers. Ah, oh, so the, the next day I just uh, removed all the fire. My, my base has been destroyed. I couldn't believe it. I wondered why the pillagers would do this. But I was not going to let the pillagers win. No, I was getting my revenge. So I made a full set of diamond armor and also some new tools. I was ready for this. I was ready to show the pillagers not to mess with me. So I headed out in search of the pillagers. And surprisingly, the next day, I found this outpost. But I needed a better view, so I climbed this tree right here and got a better view of the outpost. And I have to say, I could see they had everything set up. I wonder what they're doing. But that was not going to stop me. I had to get back my axolotl. So I started attacking these pillagers. I'll do anything in my power to get back my axolotl. So I took down these pillagers one by one. And then finally, I took down the final pillager, and then I went around the base looking for my axolotl. So I opened up all the barrels and chests looking for my pet axolotl. And then finally, I opened up this chest right here, and there it was, my pet axolotl. I was super happy. And there was also this note, and it had some coordinates. I wonder what this could be. I best go investigate. This could be serious. So I left the outpost and headed out in search of whatever this could be. So I travelled for days and days, and then I stumbled across this village. But this was no ordinary village. This place was ruined. Somebody had to have done this. I wonder who did this. There was no one around. There was no villagers or anyone. Everybody was all gone. Oh, I've been travelling for days and days. It's got to be up this hill, surely. Wait, what's that? A woodland mansion? Uh, okay, how is this? Wait, this doesn't look like a normal woodland mansion. This has all been burned down. I need to go and get a better look at this. So I headed over to the woodland mansion, and I could tell this place has been destroyed, and also the forest. Who could have done this? So I entered the mansion, and yeah, there was no one here. This place has been destroyed. Just look at this place. There's nothing around. And then, the next day, as I was going around the Woodland Mansion, I found this strange hatch of some sort. I don't know what this thing is. And then it started playing this beeping sound. So I kind of panicked and decided to uh, leave the Woodland Mansion and go back home. That is really strange. I wonder what that could be. Oh, well then, we finally arrive home on day 33, and it's nice to be back home. Anyways, it's time to place in my axolotl. So I did, and I could tell he was now very happy. He was happy to be home. Anyways, after that, I decided to make the enchantment table. And of course, I needed the enchantment room, so I decided to make myself one. Pretty simple, nothing special really. Looks pretty good though, if I do say so myself. But the thing was, I only had one bookshelf, and uh, yeah, I needed loads more. So, I need to go back to the nether and collect up loads and loads of blaze rods.
and then I wanted to go and find a warped forest so I headed to the warped forest and collected some ender pearls because I needed loads of these to make some eyes of ender all right that should do it I get home and make some eyes of ender so I headed out in search of this stronghold and surprisingly I found it in the same day it wasn't too far away surprisingly but even better I could see there was a library right here now I was super happy so I collected up loads and loads of bookshelves because I needed plenty of these and then I went around exploring and then as I turned this corner right here there it was the end portal so what I decided to do was to place in all these eyes of ender and the good thing was we only need like six more which was awesome anyways we arrive home and i make a bunch of bookshelves and of course i go and place them in and there it is we now have a full enchantment table anyways i did a bit of enchanting after that and i enchanted my chest plate get myself texture free and also i enchanted my pickaxe get myself efficiency four uh silk touch and also unbreaking free which is pretty nice hey also i noticed that there was actually a wolf around my base so i decided to tame him have him as my very own pet so i've got some bones and tame this wolf and there it is we now have a new pet wow well 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 i think it's now time we go on a bit of an adventure so i headed out across the lands and i found this desert temple and as i entered this desert temple um yeah i didn't really find anything good but that was okay i continued my journey and i found a jungle so i decided to go around the jungle and collect up some jungle wood and also i made some shears so i could get myself some uh leaves because i might use these jungle leaves for my base ah just what i was looking for a jungle temple so i entered this jungle temple right here but once again i didn't find anything good that was all right i decided to gather up some of these mossy uh blocks because i would need these for my build and then i found this ruined never portal so i opened up this chest right here and i couldn't believe my very own eyes there was an enchanted golden apple wait is that a badlands yes it is surprisingly there was a badlands right outside the jungle so i headed to the badlands and collected loads and loads of terracotta i would need this and also collected some of this dirt so i could use it for some paths also find this mine shaft which there wasn't really anything special here so i left the mine shaft and i found a mine cart and it had some diamonds and also a name tag perfect now on day 49 i stumbled across a mushroom biome which was quite nice so i happily headed over there and got to land and what i decided to do was to gather up some mushroom blocks because i might use these for my build once again <laughs> I shouldn't be using a pickaxe on dirt but i really needed some of these blocks hey and then what we decided to do being this mushroom cow we wanted to watch the sunset so we did on day 50 i barely made it home literally um but what i decided to do now was to do a bit of building so it's time to do some building This is our storage area. This is where we store all our food, like our carrots and potatoes and wheat. Very nice. And I have to say, I really like what I've done. Added some new paths around, some new walls, and also decorated everything up, making it look very nice. And there it is, our bases are pretty much done. I think it looks amazing. I think it's time we do a bit more enchanting. And I could see there was fortune too, but I didn't really have enough levels. But before I went back to the nether, I wanted to get myself some more diamonds. So I headed to the caves, finding myself loads and loads more diamonds. All right, I collected a few diamonds, not too many, just a few. And then I went to the nether and went around collecting loads and loads of levels. I seriously needed loads, so I spent a little while in the nether collecting loads of levels. And as I was making a way through the nether, I stumbled across a nether bastion, which was quite nice. So I thought, why not? Let's head over there and see what we can find. And I found these chests right here with some nice loot. Hey, and also I found some shiny gold. I was very happy. But then, even better, I found 
the Lone Stone. I made sure to collect this because this was special. Anyways, I said goodbye to the Bastion and headed back home. Anyways, we arrived home and I enchant that diamond pickaxe, get myself Fortune 2 and also enchanted my leggings get myself protection free and with that fortune 2 pickaxe it is now time to mine up these diamonds so that's what i did and i have to say i got myself plenty of diamonds which was pretty nice but i was not quite just finished doing an enchant yet so i headed back to my enchant table enchanted my pickaxe get myself efficiency 4 but even better i got myself a diamond sword with lutein 3 which was amazing also decided to enchant a bow another sword with sharpness 4 and i thought why not combine those together to make the ultimate diamond sword so that's what i did Ooh, and finally, the Lone Stone. It's time to place this in. So I made a very simple pillar right here and placed in the Lone Stone. And there it was. And before the day ended, I wanted to get myself a new pet. So I headed out and I found this horse. Uh, so I tamed this horse right here. And there it is. We now have a new pet. The next day, I was thinking we need to build our horse her very own home. So that's what I did. Using some spruce stairs. A bunch of decoration, like a bunch of leaves around. And I have to say, I really like the look of this area. I think it looks awesome. I also noticed that I had some name tags. And I think it's now time we name our pets. So, for my horse, I went with Bella. And for my pet dog, I went with Rex. So I happily named my pets Bella and Rex. So I named my dog Rex right here. And then I headed outside and named my horse Bella. I could tell they was very happy. It is now time we start preparing for this woodland mansion. So I made some healing potions, some strength potions, and then I went to get myself some food. I would need plenty of this food if I was going to be taking down this mansion. So I said my goodbyes and we're now ready. So I headed out for days and days, searching for this woodland mansion. I was about to give up. I, I didn't know if I could find it until I could see off in the distance. There it was, the woodland mansion. So I headed over there the quickest I could and entered the woodland mansion. But even worse, I was ambushed by these illagers, which low-key scared the days out of me, literally. Anyways, these illagers did serious damage. If I got stuck, it would be game over in minutes. But luckily, I was able to lose them. As I headed up these stairs right here, I could see there was more illagers. So I used my bow to take down these illagers. And then, there he was, the evoker. So I decided to use my bow to take down the evoker. And there it was, the evoker has been defeated. It's time to head over there and collect up the Tome of Undying. Anyways, I continue to take down the rest of the Illagers and Evokers. So that's what I did. I went around the entire mansion, taking every single one down. Well then, just like that, the Woodland Mansion has been taken care of. So it's time to leave. And I have to say, we got ourselves loads of Tome of Undyings. This is amazing. Anyways, we arrive home and the first thing I wanted to do was to go back to the nether and collect up some ancient debris because I really needed loads of this to turn my armor into netherite. So I spent a little while collecting some ancient debris. But that was not all. Oh no, I need to also go to the fortress and collect some more blaze powder. So I headed to the fortress, took down a few more blazes, and then went back to the warped forest. And of course I took down some endermen because I needed, yeah, ender pearls. And then finally on day 92, I turned all my diamond armor into netherite and also my tools as well. And here it is. We now have a full set of Neverite armor. It is now time. It is now time. It is now time to defeat the Ender Dragon once and for all. So I gathered all the stuff I needed for my chest, like my sword, armor, potions, and all the stuff I would need for this fight. And before I left, I made sure to say goodbye to my pets, because this might be the last time I would ever see them. But I could see my pets were sad. But I had to do this. I had to take down the Ender Dragon once and for all. So I said goodbye, 
and I headed out. she was, the end portal. I knew what I had to do. I placed in all the eyes of Ender and there it was, the end portal. So I didn't hesitate and I jumped through and as I got through to the other side and there she was, the ender dragon. And I could tell the ender dragon was furious. She instantly fired fireballs at me. This was not good but I knew what I had to do. I had to take down the end crystals the quickest I could before the ender dragon could take down me. So I went to each pillar taking down all the end crystals and as I turned around I could tell the ender dragon was getting angrier and angrier. This was not good. There it is. All the end crystals have been destroyed. It's now time to take down the ender dragon once and for all. tell the ender dragon was getting furious she was getting weaker and weaker so i waited for my right opportunity and i striked taking my final swing and defeating the ender dragon and there it is wow we did it wow i can't believe it we actually did it so i gathered up all the xp and also the dragon egg I was not going to be leaving this behind. And there it is. Wow, we finally got the dragon egg. So I said my final goodbyes to the end and I headed back home. So I arrived back home and it is now time to make a place for the end egg to go. So I used some quart blocks, uh, which looks pretty nice if I do say so myself. And then finally, it is now time to place in the ender egg. And there it is. Wow, we did it. Wait, what's that? Is that a letter? It is. It's got coordinates on it. This has to be serious. I have to go and investigate. Often somebody needs help. So I packed up my things as quick as I could and headed out, searching for days and days across the lands, not finding anything. Oh, I've been traveling for days, so I don't think I'm ever gonna find it. Oh, wait, what's that? Is that a chest? It is a chest. So I rushed over there the quick as I could and opened up his chest and as I opened up his chest there was nothing in here, it was empty. I knew this was a waste of time. Wait, what is that on top of the hill? Who is that? He's... where's he going? He's, he's running away. I best go and chase after him, see what I can find. Then finally, on day 100, I could tell it was a villager and he finally came to a stop but before I could say anything, he pushed this button and I fell into this obsidian trap. I was stuck, I didn't know what to do. And then I could see he was climbing down the ladder and then I tried to escape but I couldn't. And within seconds, I could see he had a potion. He threw the potion at me and also gave me a golden apple. And then minutes passed and then strangely, he set me free. I wonder why. So I looked around and I was in this secret lab of some sort. I wonder what this place could be. But I also noticed that I've changed and I could see I've been turned back into a regular villager. In today's video, I have to survive 100 days as a pillager. And also, I have three objectives. First, take down and destroy a village. Second, build my very own outpost. 
and finally defeat the Ender Dragon. Can I survive these 100 days as a pillager in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching and find out. So here we go, our journey begins on day one and the first thing I did is I looked around to see what I could see and off in the distance, there it was, a pillager outpost. So I travelled over there the quick as I could and went to go and say hello to all the pillagers. You must be the leader, very nice. And as you can see we're not really well equipped with anything. So I headed into the outpost to see what I could find and after a bit of searching I found this chest. So I opened up this chest and I found myself a crossbow, some arrows and also an XP bottle. I'll be sure to take this. There was also some dark oak wood, so I decided to use that dark oak wood to make myself a crafting table and also some sticks. So I placed down my crafting table and made myself some bread and also a wooden pickaxe. Very nice. Anyways, I left the outpost and went to go and find myself some stone. And luckily, there was this cave nearby. Hello there, Axe Bottle. Anyways, I gathered up some stone and decided to make some stone tools. And then I gathered up all the iron that was here. And I have to say, there was quite a lot of iron, if I do say so myself. And of course, I can't forget about copper. I will need this for my spyglass. Well then, I think it's time we leave the caves and find some food. And luckily, there were some cows nearby. So I took down these cows and I got myself enough leather to make myself some armor. Very nice. But of course, we need a place to sleep. And I was thinking, it looks like perfect spot. I'm sure the pillagers won't mind if I take a tent for the night. So I placed in my furnace and I cooked up some food. And of course, I would need a bed. So I'm sure the pillagers won't mind if I take some wool. I'll bring it back, I promise. So I made my bed and I thought why not spend the rest of the day doing some target practicing. You never know when this might come in handy. And I have to say, I was pretty good at this. Alright, that should be plenty of target practicing. Time to gather up my arrows and my food and watch the sunset for the first time in my world. Well, it's the next morning. Uh, looks like a sunny day. Looks like a perfect day to go on a bit of an adventure. So I headed out to see what I could find. Hey, uh, yep. Yeah. Well, I can see there's a, uh, a village nearby. I know what to do. Okay, we have to be careful now. There could be uh, iron golems anywhere around here, so I'm gonna be really careful. Okay, it's clear here. Um, let's keep looking. Um, anything else around? Oh, okay, that was a bit of grass. Oh my days. A whole civilized village. Okay, I need to get down. Uh, some hay bales and also some water. Let's just take the hay bales. I'm sure we'll be all right. Uh, okay, not the softest landing, so I'll be really careful. There could be iron golems anywhere. I haven't seen any villagers yet. Look, a villager. Okay. Um, I'm using my axe. Let me take him down. Alright, we did it. Okay, uh, let's close the door before anyone sees us. I uh, wonder what we got here. Okay, some bread. Why not? I'll take this. Also a stone cutter. Ah, uh, sure. I'll take this as well. Okay. Alright, I wonder if there's anything else we can find. Oh, a brewing stand. I'll take this. This might come in handy. And then I was spotted by this other villager. I had to act quick. So, I took him down as soon as possible. Some leggings, I'll take these. Very nice. Hey, and also a blast furnace. I'll take this as well. I wonder if there's anything else we can find. Um, some more bread. And also some empty maps. Alright, I'm gonna gather up some of this wheat because I'm gonna be needing this. Ah, uh, why not? I might as well collect up some melons as well. I might need these for some potions or something. But then my fears came true. Oh no. I ain't got them. Okay. Um these things here can do serious damage. I'm gonna have to be careful. So I had a plan. I decided to get myself some flint. And also I cooked up some iron. Alright, this should do it. A flint steel. Okay, let's be careful now. Uh, there's the iron golem. Okay, we should set the village on fire. Alright, that should do it. Okay, I'll be really careful though. So I went around the entire village, setting this village on fire. Okay, that should do it. Okay, okay, the eye golem saw me. Run, quickly go. Gotta get out of here quick. 
And luckily, I was able to outrun the Iron Golem. That was close. And I continued to set the village on fire. And as I entered this house, I could see there were some bookshelves. Wow, look at this place. And I also noticed there were some other villagers. So I took care of them as well. All right, I think it's time we face this Iron Golem. I'm going to have to be really careful, though, because he's way stronger than me. Maybe I can set him on fire with a bit of flint steel. All right, nice hit on the crossbow there. And then luckily, after a bit of time, the Iron Golem fell. Oh, there he goes. Wow, there it is. Anyways, I continue to go around and destroy the village. All right, that should do it. I think it's now time to return home. Well then, we finally arrived home on day three, and now what I wanted to do was to build my very own base. Here looks perfect. So I placed in my crafting table, blast furnace, and also some storage. But of course, I would need loads of materials before building my base, so I headed to the nearest forest and got myself loads of wood. And then I started construction on my very own home. Used a variety of different blocks like wood and planks, cobblestone, and also some wool, which actually looks pretty nice. Placed in a window and also a door. Anyways, I finished up on the base, but there was one thing I was missing. Uh, I need some leaves. So I placed down a few leaves, and that's a lot better. So I suppose I'll give you guys a bit of a tour. Starting off here we have some nice pathways, some fences, some hay bales and also some leaves. If we enter the house we have a furnace, crafting table and also some chests. And of course over here we have my bed. This is where I sleep. And also once we was at the village we also found a few maps. So I thought why not make a bit of a map area so I can see around my base. So I placed it in right here. And where am I? There I am. Ah yes, our armor. It's not looking that good. I think it's time for an upgrade. So I headed to the nearest caves, finding myself loads of iron. Ah yes, that's plenty of iron. Oh, there's actually a lot of iron here, which is great. And then, to my surprise, I found this ravine. Hey, there's loads of iron here. Anyways, I jumped down into the water, and then I couldn't believe it. Diamonds. So I quickly crafted an iron pickaxe, and I got myself my very own first diamond. I was super happy. Anyways, my journey continues through the caves, and I found myself a mob spawner. Even better, as I opened up this chest right here, there was a name tag. I would be needing this, but that's not all. Oh no, I found myself even more diamonds, which was great. Alright, well, we should uh, have enough now for a diamond chest plate, but I think I'm going to make some tools instead. Is that a mine shaft? Yes, it is. I found this mine shaft, which was great. I was looking for one of these. So I went around the mine shaft, searching to see what I could find. And to my surprise, I found another mob spawner. Hey, and also, I found a golden apple. Ah yes, just what I'm looking for, some amethyst crystals. I would need this for my spyglass. All right, that should do it. That was a perfect mining trip. I think it's time to go back home. And just like that, we are now home. So the first thing I did is I smelted up all the iron and copper that I collected, and I made myself some diamond tools, like a diamond shovel, diamond pickaxe, diamond sword, and also a diamond axe. And then finally, the next day on day 10, I made a full set of iron armor. And there it is. We now have a full set of iron armor and diamond tools. Well, on day 11, I wanted to now get myself my very own pet. So I headed out across the lands and luckily the next day I was able to find this wolf. Hey there, buddy. How you doing? So I tamed this wolf right here, and there it is. We now have a friend. Hey, and there it is. We have a friend, and I also thought I'd change the colour of his collar to grey. And I could tell he was very happy. But then, as I turned around, I could see there was this village. I knew what had to be done. All right, my friend, uh, you sit here, and I'm going to take down this village. So I travelled over there carefully and took down this villager with my axe. I took down his villager and left his house, and there it was. But luckily, he was no problem. I was easily able to take him out, and there it is. The entire village has been destroyed. So I returned back to my dog, and we headed back home. Well, we finally arrived home, and uh, now what I wanted to do was to bake a bit of a farm. So I flattened up the ground, planted in some potatoes, some carrots, some beetroot seeds, and also some wheat. Very nice. But of course, I uh, had to do a bit of decorating, so I added a few fences around, and also some uh, leaves. 
Once I was making these farms, I also thought, why not make a chicken farm so I can get myself some eggs? So that's what I did. Pretty simple, but it'll do for now. All right, chickens, uh, this is your new home. Uh, enjoy it, I suppose. And then after that, I decided to go and name my dog. And I wanted to call him Sumo. I thought that was a perfect name for him. So I went to go and name Sumo, and I could tell he was very happy. Just look at him. All right, Sumo, uh, how about we go on a bit of an adventure? I think it'd be fun. Let's go. And uh, Mr. Pillager, uh, could you look after my base for me? Make sure no hostile mobs or creatures enter my home. Thanks, I appreciate it. Come on, Sumo, let's go. In the heart of creation, where nothing is real, where nothing but potential steers the wheel. What can you do? What you want to do? Because I believe that it's real. But I'm trapped inside. I'm a prisoner of the past. Though I know that things don't last. I only have today What kind of wicked plan is this? Well, I know Sumo would be in a while now We haven't found anything really uh, Let's keep looking though You never know, we might find something eventually Alright, uh, let's keep looking You never know, we might find something uh, Let's make our way up this hill Wait, what's a woodland mansion? Sumo, look A woodland mansion Look at this place We have to go and investigate this Ah, uh, looks like it's been, uh, set on fire or something. This place is destroyed. Uh, I best we go and have a look and see what we can find. Alright, be careful now, Sumo. Yeah, you don't know what's here, so just be really careful. Hey, what's over here? Oh, some, uh, villagers. They must have been here for ages. Wait, Sumo, come back, we're going. Wait, Sumo? Okay, Sumo, I know you're excited, but please don't run away like that again. Alright, now, uh, Sumo, you sit here. And I'm gonna go around and see what I can find. Hey, uh, old farm? It's the only thing that survived. Wait, what's over here? An old room? I wonder whose room this was. Well, there's nothing here really. I best get back to Sumo. Alright, uh, Sumo, uh, I didn't find anything, so I suppose we should just get out of here. Come on, Sumo, let's go. Let's see what else we can find. I'm sure there's loads of other stuff we can find around the world. What is this? What is this thing? It's like a hatch or something. It's making this beeping sound as well. I wonder what this could be. Wait, let me use my spyglass to see if I can see anything. Nope, I can't see anything. There has to be a way to open this, I'm sure of it. You know what? I'm gonna write down the coordinates. And maybe later on, we can come back and maybe we can open this. Alright, Sumo. I don't trust this place. I think we should get out of here before anything else happens. Sumo, it's getting pretty chilly out here. I feel like we should find some shelter and cook up some of this food. Whoa, look at these caves. Careful, Sumo, don't get too close to the edge. Oh, my days, look at this place. Looks pretty cool, though. Ah, you know what, Sumo? I have an idea. Why don't I just climb this mountain and we get a better view of the area? Wow, just look at this view. Wait, oh, wait, what? A pillager outpost? There's a whole camp here. This is perfect. Sumo, let's go. So me and Sumo, we headed over there. All right, Sumo, we made it over to the camp. Um, oh, there's a fire. I know what. How about we cook up some of our food? It's pretty chilly out here, so I'm going to move you over to the fire so you're a bit warmer. Oh, some food's cooked up. Very nice. Here's a bit, Sumo. You know what? That looks like a perfect tent over there. Yeah, I'm sure the pillagers won't mind if we stay here for one night. A good boy, Sumo. And it's probably best that we actually get some rest. I mean, we've been travelling for days. Alright, good night, Sumo. I'll see you the next day. The next day arrives and I now wanted to go around the camp and say hello to all the pillagers. And after a bit of searching, I found this pillager. 
and he wanted to tell me something. He told me that, he told me that a village was nearby and that they needed more reinforcements and he offered me to help. So I happily accepted that offer and then he told me that there was some loot in this barrel. So I opened up this barrel and I could see there was some arrows, some bread and also a flint and steel. I might need this. Okay, but before I go, I'm going to make sure to say goodbye to Sumo. Okay, Sumo, I'm heading out for a couple days. You stay here and I'll be back, I promise. Ah, this must be the village they're talking about. It looks so destroyed already. So let me head over there to see what they're gonna say. And then I spoke to this pillager and he told me that there were some zombie villagers at the village and they needed help to take them down. So I headed over there the quickest I could and yep, they was right. There was zombie villagers everywhere. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to be careful. Oh jeez, they're getting close. Okay, I'm gonna switch my sword. Oh jeez, okay. Uh, last zombie, hopefully. Anyways, I went around the entire village, taking down the rest of the zombies. So I placed some TNT and lit it up. Whoa, look at this place. It's completely destroyed. Let me place in a bit of TNT. Wait, what's that? An axolotl? How can there be an axolotl right here? I can't use this TNT. Not once the axolotl's here. There's no way he can survive here. Just look at the place. I have to save him. So that's what I did. I swam down and collected up the axolotl. Alright buddy, let's go. This place here isn't safe for you. I gotta take you to safety. Ah, we finally made it back to the outpost. And what I wanted to do was to place in the axolotl into this chest so he could be safe. Wait, where's Sumo? Sumo? He was right here. Oh no, where is he? So I panicked and didn't know what to do. But then... Wait, oh my day, Sumo. I thought you ran away. Okay, well, I think it's time to go back home. Don't run away like that, please, again. All right, let's go home. And we're finally home. Wow, it's nice to be back home, isn't it, Sumo? And of course, I now wanted to go to the caves and get myself some obsidian. And luckily, after a short time, I was able to find some lava. So I placed it in my water bucket and got myself loads of obsidian. All right, that should be plenty of obsidian. So I return home and make the nipper portal. And there it is. So of course I lit up the nether portal and decided to head through and get to the other side. And as I got through to the other side, it was just a typical nether. Nice. So I went around to see what I could find and after a little bit of exploring, I could see off in the distance, there was a nether fortress. So I happily traveled over there and went to go and get myself some blaze rods. I would be needing these for potions. Ah yes, I found this soul sand valley and I wanted to collect myself some bones. I would need these bones for my uh, potato farm. Wait, is that a bastion? Yes it is. I found this bastion nearby so I entered the bastion and I went to go and get myself some pretty good stuff if I do say so myself. And also found some other good stuff like a lone stone and a bunch of gold which was very nice. Uh, but we had a problem. The last nether fortress I went to didn't have any nether wart so I had to go and find a second nether fortress and luckily I was able to find one and then as I turn this corner, there it was. Never what? So I happily gathered up loads of never what, and I decided to go back home. But there was no time to waste. Oh no, I wanted to make a brewing station. So I did. So I used a few stone bricks and also some crimson fences. And then finally, I made a few potions, like some health 2 potions and also some regeneration potions. I would be needing these. Well then, with all of that out the way, I thought why not do some building? We haven't done much building yet, so I thought that'd be a good idea. So I headed to the caves and got myself loads of stone, and then I headed to the nearest forest and got myself some dark oak wood. Alright, 
there should be plenty of materials. So I headed home and I now wanted to build a bit of a watchtower. So I did. I used a variety of different blocks like spruce wood and also loads of stone bricks. And for the roof I thought I used some dark oak stairs. But what's a base without a path? I don't know. So I built a few paths around. And finally here it is, I have to say I really like this build, I like the pathways, the walls I've done and also I really like the watchtower, looks pretty nice with all those leaves. And over here we have a few new uh, walls and I thought I'd neat up the area a little bit to make it look a bit nicer. I'm really happy with this build. Well there was also one more thing I wanted to build, I wanted to make a bit of a sheep farm because I wanted loads of wool. I just made it very simple, adding some spruce wood around which looks pretty good. So I gathered up a few sheep nearby by and I could tell they was very happy. Uh, but there was one more thing I kind of wanted to do as well. I wanted to get myself some better armor. So I thought diamond would be perfect. So I headed to the caves and went to go find myself some diamonds. And the good thing was luck was on my side. I was able to find myself so many diamonds in a short time, which was incredible. <laughs> then, that should do it. It's time to head home and make my diamond armor. Ah, so I arrive home and make a full set of diamond armor like a diamond chest plate, diamond leggings, diamond boots and also a diamond helmet. And I almost forgot, I almost forgot about the enchantment table. So I decided to make that as well. But of course we would need a place for this enchantment table to go so I thought outside would be a perfect place. Anyways it's time to place in the enchantment table and there it was. But uh, we was missing one thing, we need bookshelves. So I headed back to the nether and got myself loads of blaze powder and also some ender pearls. So I happily crafted some eyes of ender and I now wanted to go and find the stronghold. So I threw my eye of ender and luckily the next day I was able to find the stronghold and surprisingly I found a library straight away which was pretty cool. Anyways I gathered up a few bookshelves and also found some enchanted books which was pretty nice. But then I couldn't believe it, there it was, the end portal, wow. Okay then, I think it's time to go home. Ah yes, I finally arrived home and the first thing I did is I made some bookshelves and placed them in of course. And there it is, our enchantment table room is pretty much done. So of course I wanted to see what enchants I could get. And to my surprise, I was able to get myself a Visit C4 on my pickaxe and also Sharpness 3 on my diamond sword. As you can see we have some enchanted tools right here, but sadly we do not have any enchanted armour. So I headed back to the nether and I went to go and get myself loads more levels. Well then, that should do it, it's time to head home and enchant my armour. So that's what I did, and I have to say, I got myself some pretty good enchants. I got myself protection free on pretty much everything. There it is, we now have a full set of enchanted tools and armour, wow. Day 61, I wanted to now get myself a horse pet, so I headed out across the lands and found this beautiful horse, and luckily I was able to tame it. So I equipped this horse with some diamond armour and also a saddle, but she would need a place to live so I thought why not build her her very own stable. So I decorated it up with beautiful blocks. Ah yes, yes, uh, looks amazing if I do say so myself. And I could tell my horse was very happy. As you can see I added a few flowers around to give it some more detail and of course I made a brand new path which actually looks okay. But that's not all, oh no. My horse, she needed a name so I thought why not call her Lily. I thought that was a perfect name and I could tell she was very happy. Well, 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 with all of that out of the way, I think it's now time to go on another adventure. Come on Sumo, let's go. So me and Sumo, we headed out across the lands and we found this desert temple. Very nice. So I entered this desert temple, finding myself some TNT of course, but sadly, the chests didn't really have anything good in them. Oh no. But that was okay, we continue exploring to see what else we could find and we found a village. Ah uh, yeah, me and Sumo, we knew what to do. We went around the entire village, taking down all these villagers. Hey, also I found some hay, which is pretty nice. Anyways, our journey continues across the seas, and I stumbled across this shipwreck. So I entered this shipwreck, finding myself some nice treasures. 
Hey, also I found a buried treasure map. I'll be sure to take this and find myself some treasure. So me and Sumo, we headed out across the lands. And after a bit of digging, there it was, the buried treasure. And it had some amazing loot, like some diamonds. Wow. Hey, a mushroom biome. Me and Sumo, we found this mushroom biome. And if I have to be honest, there wasn't really anything here. Just a load of mushroom cows. That's more like it, a Badlands biome. So I gathered up loads of terracotta because I might be needing this. Hey Zumo, I think I found a jungle. Yep, that's a jungle, right? So I headed over to the jungle, get myself some bamboo and also a load of jungle wood. Well, okay, I feel like I've got a full inventory of uh, jungle wood, Zumo. Let's get out of here. Sumo, there's a uh, pillager outpost. This looks pretty cool. Let's go check it out. Well, I mean, there's no one here. Wait, what's this? Hey, looks like a base of some sort. There's this cool statue as well. I wonder who this is. Anyway, Sumo, I think we should keep looking around to see what else we can find. I'm sure there's something here we can find. <laughs> check this out to see what we can find. Uh, well, there's not really anything here. It's pretty empty. What do you think, Sumo? I think it's pretty empty. Sumo, this place, uh, yeah, kind of looks abandoned. I think we should leave. Right, we've explored everything around here. Let's continue exploring to see what else we can find. Hey, look, there's a village. Um... There's also a few villagers around as well. Huh. I suppose I should go and take them down. Okay, I'm gonna take a shot. Hopefully I hit. Good, okay. So I waited for the right opportunity and I struck, taking down this villager. Whoa, there's loads of villagers here. Look at them all. There's so many. So Sumo, let's take them down. Go, let's go Sumo. Let's take down these villagers, quickly. Okay, nice, we got him. Perfect. Go on Sumo, yes, well done. I also noticed I had some TNT in my inventory, so I knew what to do. Wow, okay. Wow, we did a good job, Sumo. I think it's time to get out of here. It's nice to be back home, finally. So I thought, why not build a bit of a storage room? I had a lot of items and I needed a storage room. So I used a variety of different blocks, like some spruce wood and also a load of wool. It's a good thing I built that sheep farm. Uh, I also thought I'd build a few paths as well. You gotta have a path. So I made a few paths and I also did a bit of decorating, making the place look pretty nice. I really like the design of this base. I think I really like the trees or the fences and the pathway. We got some nice hay bales over here, some spruce wood, some leaves, and of course, entering our storage room, we have a load of chests, and these chests should last me a long time. And yeah, that should be plenty of storage. Very nice, I'm very happy with this build. Well, 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 I thought why not go and get some netherite? So I went to the nether and got myself loads of ancient debris. That 
there should be plenty of ancient debris. It's time to head home. So I get home and smelt up all that ancient debris that I collected. And once I was waiting, I thought, why not make the smithing table? And there it was. And then finally, the next day, all my ancient debris has been smelted up. So I turn my armor into death rites and also some of my tools. And there it was. We now have a full set of Netherite tools and armor. But we're not finished just yet. Oh no, I wanted to go back to Nether once again and get myself loads of Ender Pearls and also loads of Blaze Rods. Alright, that should do it. That should be plenty of Ender Pearls. It is now time. It is now time. It is now time to go and defeat the End Dragon. So I gathered everything I needed from my chest. All the stuff I would need for this fight. And before I left, I made sure to say goodbye to all my pets. Like Lily, and also all my sheep friends. But of course, I had to say goodbye to Sumo. And there it was, the end portal. This had to be done. I had to go and defeat the Ender Dragon. So I jumped through and got through to the other side. And there she was, the Ender Dragon. And I could tell the Ender Dragon was not happy whatsoever. Oh no. She instantly charged at me, but she missed. So I thought, why not go and take down all the end crystals? So that's what I did. And then finally, I took down the final end crystal, and this really upset the ender dragon. She was not happy whatsoever, but it was time to end this fight once and for all. Alright, this is it. It is now time to finish this once and for all. So I waited for the right opportunity, and I struck, taking down the ender dragon. Yes, there it is, we did it. We have taken down the Ender Dragon. Wow. Hey, and there it is, we did it. We defeated the Ender Dragon. So I gathered up all the XP, and of course I wanted to gather up the Ender Egg. So I did, and wow. And all we have to do now is go back home. So we finally arrived home and I now wanted to make a bit of a place for the end egg to go. So I used loads of gold blocks and quartz blocks, which looked pretty nice. Then finally, I place in the end egg. Wow, this place looks awesome, Sumo. What do you think? Sumo? Oh, wait, Sumo? Wait, what? Oh, wait, where am I? Wait, Sumo, where are you? Wait, oh, it is. Okay, uh, villager? Wait, where are you going? Don't leave me here. You cannot leave me here. You gotta be kidding me. Right, I, I gotta find a way out of this place. Um, right. Is there any way out? I can reach this wood, but I don't think I'll be able to grab it from here. Let me punch it. No, okay, I can't reach it from here. It's way too far. Um, maybe in these barrels there's some stuff. Rotten flesh. I mean, I'll take it for spare food. Um, uh, what's over here? What in these barrels? Um, oh, wait, some 
bamboo. I'll take this. This might come in handy. I might need this. A small bamboo and also as a crossbow. I'll take this. Uh, wait. Oh, some arrows. Oh, wait, some string. I can use this to make a fishing rod. Okay, perfect. Right, we need some wood. I can't reach any. Wait. Okay, perfect. Some oak planks. I can use this to craft a crafting table. Yes. Okay, we have enough. We make a crafting table and I think I'm going to place a crafting table here and make some sticks and a fishing rod. Okay, this should be good enough, hopefully. Please work. Yes. Okay, let's do this. Let's get all the wood we can. Three bits uh, should be plenty. Okay, let's make a pickaxe. Okay, let's get out of here. This takes forever. Okay, we're out. Um, okay, we need to find a way out of here now. Well, I wonder what happened here. This can't be good. This looks like the only way out. I can't go the way the villager went because I might lead right back up to him. This is the only option I have. I have no choice. Please be a way out. Okay, let's go. Um... Okay. Wait, old storage room. Maybe there's some useful things I can find here. Okay, there's some arrows, some more water bottles. All right, some more water bottles. Uh, I wonder what's back here. Oh, wait, a barrel. Wait, what's this? A key, a hatch key. Wait, I can use this to open up the hatch at the Woodland Mansion. This has to be the key. Okay, well, we need to get out of here quick. Let's continue through this tunnel. And hopefully we can find a way out. I don't know if I trust this place. Right, water? Oh, I don't have a choice. I'm gonna have to go through this. Here goes nothing. Oh, finally we made out. Okay. Whoa, look at this place. It looks insane. Anyways, we've got to keep going. Uh, we've got to get out of here. Let's keep going. Hopefully we can make it out. Wait, what's this? Whoa! Look at this place! Looks like somebody's been here, though. I wonder who. Anyways, uh, we got to go. We've got to get out of here. We can't stay here for much longer. Just in case that villager comes back. Alright, well, we must be getting close now. Okay, I think we're getting close. I think to the surface. Yes, some vines. Perfect. Let's climb as quick as we can. Whew. Okay, we made it out. Oh, let's get some fresh air. Alright, well, we have to go back for Sumo though. We can't leave him here. Uh, okay, let's go back. Let's be careful. We have to be really careful now because I don't want to bump into that villager. Wait, there he is! Look! The villager! That's maybe where Sumo is. Okay, let's carefully make our way over. Okay, wait, wait, Sumo! Yes, okay, uh, we gotta get Sumo out of here quickly. He's stuck in his cage! Okay, I'm gonna get you out, Sumo, I promise. Let's make a run for it. Okay, we made it in the house. Okay, Sumo, I'm gonna get you out of here. Yes, okay, we did it. Okay, Sumo, we need to get out of here. But I'm starving, I need some food. Uh, I wonder where there's some food. Um, wait, over here. Sumo? Wait, what? Oh, my day, Sumo, you're the best. Okay, we need to get out of here. Stay near me, Sumo. We're gonna get out of here, okay? Let's go. Wait, look. There he is, the villager. He's speaking to someone. I wonder who that is. I feel like, Sumo, we should not mess with this. We should get out of here. All right, let's get out of here. Let's go. All right, Sumo, you good? Let's get out of this village. Let's go, Sumo. 
Okay, Sumo, here we are. We're out the hatch. Okay, you stay here because I want you to be safe. Now, I'm going to place in this key and hopefully it works. Yes, okay, it works. Perfect. Okay, let me go and see what this is all about. You stay here. Oh, it's pretty dark down here. I can't see a thing. Wait, there's a light. Perfect, a light. That's better. I can now see. Wait, what's that noise? Wait. Who are you? In today's video, I have to survive 100 days as an isologer. And also, I have three objectives. First, destroy a village. Second, build my very own outpost. And finally, defeat the Ender Dragon. Can I survive these 100 days as an isologer in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching and find out. So here we go, our journey begins on day one and the first thing I did is I looked around and noticed I was at this tiger biome, which was great, but the first thing I wanted to do was to go and get myself some wood, so I punched down this tree with my bare hands and then decided to go and craft some brand new tools. But I now wanted to go around and find a cave, so I headed out across the lands, but then there it was, a cave. This was great, there was plenty of iron here and of course some nice coal, which was great. And that should do it, that should be plenty of materials. So I left the cave and now needed to go find some food. So I headed out across the lands and found some pigs. But then, as I was making my way through the forest, I couldn't believe it. There it was, a pillager outpost. This was great. I was super excited, so I went over to the outpost and went to go and say hello to all the pillagers that were nearby. But then, as I was about to enter the outpost, I could see that there was this pillager just standing there. And he wanted to tell me something. He wanted to tell me if that I've seen any villagers around. Apparently there's this mysterious villager that's going around. So I said no, I have not seen this villager whatsoever. And he also mentioned that I should probably know he was able to capture two of the villagers friends. And he also mentioned that if I could stay here and help them fight off any intruders. So I thought it would be great, I don't have a home just yet and here would be perfect. Anyways, I was a little bit intrigued and I wanted to go and check out the basement. As I made it to the bottom, I could see that there was these two villagers. These must be the villagers that they captured. As you can see, there's one with a red coat right here. And of course, like this white coat, which he's probably some sort of scientist. Who knows? Anyways, I also looked around the basement and found this chest. And I could see that there was some bread. Now this was great, I was getting a little bit hungry, but as I was searching around, there it was, an axe. Now these axes are extremely rare, so I'll be sure to take this. Anyways, I said goodbye to the villagers and decided to leave the basement, and I now wanted to find a place to store all my items. I thought here looks perfect, so I placed in some barrels, my crafting table, and of course my furnace, and then I decided to go and cook up that iron that I collected from the caves earlier. And I have to say, our base is getting along quite well, but there's one thing we're missing. We needed a bed, so I headed out across the land, searching for some sheep. But what I found was not what I was expecting. There it was, a village. This was really bad. So I carefully made our way over to the village, and I couldn't believe my very own eyes. I could see that there was this golem, and that was no normal golem, oh no. So I went for a closer look, but it got worse. I could see that there was two of these golems. This was really bad. I had to go back to the pillager camp and tell the leader immediately what I found. So I rushed back to camp and told the leader about what I found. And he said that we should start preparing immediately if we was going to take down this village. So I rushed back to the outpost and decided to go and make myself some iron boots. And of course a shield. But sadly, I didn't have quite enough materials to make a full set of iron armor. So I headed to the caves and went to go and get myself some more materials. All right, that should do it. That should be all the materials we need. It is time to take down this village. It is now time. It is now time to take down this village. So me and the pillagers, we stormed the village. So we arrived at the village and we immediately started taking down the iron golems. And I have to say, they did not stand a chance against us. Oh no, wheels were too strong. And then after that, we also took down the villagers and they did not stand a chance either. I also encountered the new variant of the iron golem, but luckily I was able to take him down with ease. Now, there's only one last thing to do, set the village on fire. So I made a flint and steel and set the entire village on fire. Now this is show the villagers. Well, I have to say, this place looks completely destroyed. 
Anyways, I think it's time we go back to camp. So I safely travel back home and after that fight I was able to get myself loads of iron, so I decided to make a full set of fresh tools. Hey and also I decided to do a bit of decorating, so I made some dark oak fences and decided to upgrade the outpost a little bit. And I have to say, it definitely makes a difference. But I also kind of wanted some food, I was getting kind of hungry, so I cleared out a bit of space and made a very simple potato farm. Nothing special really, but it will do for now. But I also think it's about time I start working on a bit of an outpost. I gathered up all the materials that I could and started construction on my very own outpost. And I decided to use some nice spruce wood and of course some stone bricks, which actually went quite well. I almost forgot about leaves, so I made sure to place those in as well. And there it is, that looks a lot better. But what's a house without windows? I don't know. So I made some windows and there it is. So I'll give you guys a little tour. Starting off here we have a bit of a stairway which leads up and around and there it is, my very own outpost. And I have to say it kind of looks like a castle than an outpost, but I like it. And of course, if we enter the outpost, you can see I have some furnaces, a load of chests for storage, and of course, a crafting table. And also, this chest over here is where I store all my emeralds. And the good thing was, we almost had a stack of emeralds, which was great. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this build. I think it looks amazing. Anyways, to finish off the day, I decided to go and cook up some potatoes, because the next day I wanted to go on a little adventure. So day 15, I headed out to cross the lands, searching to see what I could find. And then, as I was searching around, I stumbled across this ravine, which was great. I could see that there was loads of iron here, so I made a way down right here and gathered up some iron. As I was gathering up some iron, I noticed that there was this axolotl, so I thought why not keep this axolotl as my very own pet. We now got an axolotl pet. Anyways, my journey continues through the caves and I was able to find myself loads more iron, which was amazing. You can never have too much iron. But even better, as I turn this corner, there it was, some amethyst crystals, just what I was looking for. But then you wouldn't believe it, there it was, a mine shaft. So I decided to go and get myself some chain, I may be needing this. And then I was able to find this minecart, and as I opened up this chest I could see that there was this golden apple. Also found a little bit of lapis, so I collected some of that, but then... I found a second minecart, and as I opened up this minecart, I could see that there was this totem of regeneration. I'll be sure to take this. Who knows what powers this holds. Anyways, as I was making my way through the caves, there it was. Diamonds. This was great. So after collecting a few diamonds, I decided to go and craft myself a diamond pickaxe. I would need this for obsidian, so I went to go and find myself some lava, and I gathered up some obsidian. 15 pieces? Yeah, that should be plenty of obsidian. Anyways, it's time to go back home. So I finally arrived home and the first thing I did is I smelled all the iron that I collected from the caves. And then I decided to put the totem of regeneration on an item frame so I could have it on display. But I almost forgot. I almost forgot about my axolotl. So I decided to build her her very own home. Here looks perfect. So I spent a couple days clearing out a massive space, removing all the dirt. And I have to say, it's not too bad. It looks all right. Anyways, it's time to place in the axolotl. And I can tell the axolotl was very happy. Well, 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 I now think it's time we make the nether portal. So I placed in all the obsidian and lit it up and then headed through, of course. As I arrived on the other side, I noticed that there were some bones and I'll need these bones for my potato farm. So I gathered up all the bones that I could get. Hey, and also I stumbled across a crimson forest, which was great. So I gathered up some crimson wood. I might be needing this. And once I was getting myself some wood, I also found some glowstone. So I made sure to gather up some of that as well. But then, as I was getting myself some quartz, I noticed off in the distance, there it was, a bastion. I had to go over there. So I made a way over to the bastion and entered. And the first thing I saw was some nether wart. Now I would need this for potions. So I carefully made a way over and gathered up some nether wart. But there was also this chest. And as I opened up this chest, I could see that there was pig step. Now I'll be sure to take this. And also, I found a second chest, and I could see that there was this diamond pickaxe. Anyways, I continued searching around the bastion, and I was able to find myself a bit of ancient debris, and also this bone cudgel. And this item looked extremely rare, so I'll be sure to take this. But I also wanted to test it out, 
So I headed out into the Soul Valleys and found this skeleton. And I have to say, it was extremely powerful. I'll be sure to keep this. Anyways, my journey continues through the Nether once again. And I was able to find a Nether Fortress. This was great, so I travelled over there and started to get myself some blaze rods. I'll need these for potions. Hey, and guess what? I also found some Nether Warts. Now, you can never have too much Nether Warts, so I gathered up all the Nether Warts that I could. On my way home, I now wanted to go and get myself some Ender Pearls. So I headed to the Warps Forest and took down a load of Endermen. So I get home and the first thing I wanted to do was to make a brewing station. So I did. I used some nice black stone and of course some stone bricks, which looked very nice. And of course I placed it in a chest, added a brewing stand and placed in some water. But of course, it is time to make some potions. So I started by making some strength potions and then thought why not make some swiftness potions. You never know when I might need these. And I think it's now time we go and find the stronghold. So I made some eyes of ender and headed out across the land searching for the stronghold. And finally, by the next day, after a bit of digging, there it was, the stronghold. And I was able to find this chest and I could see that there was this diamond. This was great, but then, as I was making my way around the stronghold, there it was, the end portal. Wow, there it is. But I wasn't here for the end portal today. I needed the library, and shortly after a little bit of time, there it was, the library. This was great, so I gathered up all the bookshelves that I could get, and also noticed that there was a few chests right here, with some nice enchanted books. So I made sure to take them as well. But then, you also wouldn't believe it. I was able to find myself a second library. This was great, and the good thing was, there was also loads more enchanted books. This was truly amazing. Anyways, we got what we needed, and it's now time to leave the stronghold and return home. The next day, I get home and decided to now make the enchantment table. And there it is. Wow. But of course, we will need a place for this enchantment table to go. So I thought, here looks perfect. So I spent a couple days constructing this building. And I have to say, it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Anyways, it's time to place in the enchantment table. And there it is. But I almost forgot about the bookshelves, so I made sure to place them in as well. And I think it's now time we do a bit of enchanting. And I was able to get myself this efficiency for pickaxe. I was a little bit disappointed, so I enchanted another pickaxe. Get myself efficiency free, and I'm breaking free. But then, as I was looking at my enchanted pickaxes, I heard this noise. Immediately, I knew this was really bad, so I rushed over to the outpost as quick as I could. I could see we was under attack by these furnace golems. This was not good, so I rushed over there as quick as I could and went to go and save the pillagers. And I have to say, that was really close. If they set fire to the outpost, that would be it. But I had to see if there was any more intruders. So I made a way up to the top of the outpost and had a look. And surprisingly, there was no more furnace golems. Wow, that was close. So the next day I decided to go back to the village and find out where these furnace golems came from. So I headed back to the village and I could see this place was very destroyed. Just look at this place. As I was looking around I also noticed that there was some equipment here I could maybe take. Like these smokers and of course I found a stone cutter and some spare furnaces. So I made sure to go and collect those. But then, as I was making my way around the village, I couldn't believe it. There it was, some iron, a blast furnace, and of course a pumpkin head. This must be how the villagers craft their new golem. This was not good. Now this would be risky, but I wanted to find out what happened. So I collected up the pumpkin head, also collected up the iron blocks, and placed them in. But then, I was super surprised, there it was, a furnace golem. I kind of panicked and I backed up, but then, the furnace golem spotted me and started attacking me. This was not good, so I sprinted for my life, but luckily, this furnace golem got stuck, and I was easily able to take him out. And I have to say, that was really close. I wonder how they're doing this. Anyways, it's time to return home. Well, 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 I think it's now time we upgrade our armor. Our armor's not looking so good, and we can do with our upgrade. So I headed to the caves, and I was able to find myself another axolotl pet, which was amazing. But now I wanted to go and get myself some diamonds. So, I did. And that should do it. That should be plenty of diamonds. So I travel back home and make a full set of diamond armor, 
and of course some nice tools, very nice. And then I decided to go and enchant my diamond chest plate, get myself protection 3, which was pretty nice, and then also my helmet, get myself protection 4. But there was one problem, uh, we kind of ran out of levels, so I decided to go back to the nether once again and get myself a load more levels. Yep, that should do it. 50 levels should be plenty. So I'll get home and enchant my bow, get myself power 4 and infinity. And then I enchanted the rest of my armor and tools. And there it is, we now got a full set of diamond armor and tools. Very nice. Now let's hope this keeps us safe from those furnace golems, but we're not done just yet. Oh no, I now wanted to build a giant wall surrounding our base. So I gathered up all the materials that I could and started construction on this wall. Seventy. Here it is. This should keep us a lot safer from those furnace golems. And I also decided to build some brand new farms like this potato farm right here and also decided to build a carrot farm. So we have plenty of food and I have to say it does look pretty cool as well. This should definitely keep the furnace golems away. And uh, yes I also wanted to go and check up on the villagers to see how they was doing. And yeah they was doing pretty well I think. They didn't look too happy but I think they was alright. Well, 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 I think it's now time we go on a bit of an adventure. But before I left, I made sure to tell the pillager to keep an eye out, just in case we had any intruders. Anyways, I headed out. After a little bit of exploring, I could see that there was this jungle and there was loads of bamboo. So I gathered up a little bit of bamboo and then I discovered that there was some pandas. So I went over to them and went to go and say hi. And I could see that there was very happy pandas. Anyways, I continued searching around the forest and found some melons. Now I'd need these for potions. And as I left the jungle, I stumbled across this pillager outpost and I could see that there was some pillagers. So I went up to them and said hi as well. And then I made it to the top of the outpost and found this chest. And I could see that there was this blast fungus and of course this void cola crossbow. And then I went to go and test it out to see if it worked. And it did. Very nice. Anyways, my journey continues and I found all these roses. And I have to say, I've never seen so many roses in my life. Wait a minute, is that a desert temple? Yes, it is. I found a desert temple, which was really good. But sadly, there wasn't anything good. Just this golden apple. So I left and stumbled across a ice spikes biome, which was great. I could see there were some polar bears and of course what seems to be the Titanic. So I went over there and went to go and investigate and I was able to find this chest and I could see that there was all these treasures. This was amazing. Ah yes, just what I was looking for, a Badlands biome. This was great and I could see that there was this minecart. So I opened up this minecart and found another golden apple and then I decided to go and enter the mine shafts and find a load of gold. And then finally I gathered up some terracotta. I'll need this for my builds. But then, as I was travelling across the lands, I could see off in the distance, there it was, a village. I was very intrigued, so I headed over there and went to go and investigate. But as I made our way over to this village, I could see this place was completely destroyed. There was nothing left. I mean, just look at this place. There's nothing left. All the villagers have gone. Well, I guess then I should continue exploring to see what else I can find. This place? Yeah, kind of strange. But then, on day 80, as I was travelling through the forest, I noticed that this birch tree was broken. So I went for a closer look and I couldn't believe it. I also noticed that there was a campfire. But once again, as I looked to my right, I could see that there was this base of some sort. I had to go and investigate. So I placed down my boat and sailed over there. And as I made it over to this mysterious base of some sort, I went looking around to see who I could find. And then, as I was looking around, there it was, a Vindicator. And then he started walking towards me. I could see he wanted to tell me something. 
He wondered who I was. I told him that I was on his side. Then the Vindicator told me this was his place. All this stuff here, he built it all. This was his home. And apparently, the Vindicator has been spying on this furnace golem. And he needed my help to take down this furnace golem's village. So I said, yes, I'll be sure to help you take down this village. And then he said, but first, we will need some better armor. So we needed to head to his armory room. So we did. But as I was looking out these chests right here, there he was, the Vindicator. And he had some brand new armor for me. And it was Royal Guard armor, extremely rare. But yet, yeah, this stuff here will be perfect against the Furnace Golems. And then the Vindicator said, we're now ready to take down this village. But I did say to the Vindicator, how are we supposed to get there? Apparently, the Vindicator has some Ravengers, which we can take. So we headed to the stables and we mounted up and headed to the village. Making our way to the village, I noticed off in the distance that there was this mansion. So I went for a close look and I couldn't believe it. This place was completely destroyed. So I told the Vindicator what happened to this place. He told me long ago, before the mansion was burned, there was this evoker that lived here. But now, nobody lives here. It's completely abandoned. But then, before I could say any more, the Vindicator said we should probably continue riding. Just in case the furnace golem returned home. And he told me that he'll tell me the rest of the story later. So we continue our journey to find this village. And then finally, after a long trip, we finally arrived at the village. So we used our spy glasses to see what we could see and we noticed that there was loads of villagers here. But I was getting kind of hungry and luckily the Vindicator bought some spare food. Anyways, we had some food and then we charged the village and immediately took down this iron golem. Luckily, he was no match for us and was easily able to take him down. And then after that, me and the Vindicator, we went around the entire village, taking down all the villagers. to do it the entire village has been destroyed so i met back up with the vindicator and he told me that we've done it we've destroyed the village and there was more reinforcements on the way so we should probably get out of here so me and the vindicator we headed back to our ravengers well we finally make it back to camp and i now wanted to know about the evoker so the vindicator and i sat around the campfire and now the vindicator wanted to tell me about the evoker Apparently, long ago, there was this evoker that lived in a woodland mansion. Everything was normal until one day, the mansion was burned down by someone we don't know who. This forced the evoker to leave the mansion and find a new place to live. So, he travelled across the lands, forests, for days, looking for a new home. Finally, he was able to find a nearby outpost. So he set up camp, building his own outpost, and finally, he had his own camp set up. But then, once again, everything was good until one day, the evoker vanished. He was never to be seen again. This let nature take over his base and turn it into a wasteland. Everything he built was ruined. But then I asked the Vindicator, what does he think happened to the Evoker? He thinks the Evoker is still out there somewhere, but we may be able to never find him ever again. Well then, it's the next day and it's now time to return back home. But before I left, the Vindicator wanted to give me a gift. He wanted to give me one of his Ravengers. This was epic. So I mounted the Ravenger and before I left, I made sure to say goodbye to the Vindicator. Anyways, it's now time to travel home. So I said my final goodbyes and headed out. And finally, we travel back home. And there it is. It is nice to be back home, finally. 
So I headed back into my base and noticed that the leader wanted to tell me something. So I approached the leader and he told me apparently off in the distance there's been some strange sightings. They can't tell what it is, but we should be keeping our eye out just in case. But I now wanted to build my pet ravager his very own home. Use a variety of different blocks like some stone bricks, some spruce wood, some spruce fences, and of course some spruce stairs. Also use some cobblestone walls which actually went really well with this build. And finally, on day 95, here it is. It looks pretty awesome if I do say so myself. As you can see, I added a few chests around right here. And if we enter through here, we got some extra like stable areas. Back here, we have a few chests where we can store plenty of our items, just in case we need some extra storage. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I could tell Max was very happy. Wow, there it is. Well, 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 I now need to go and get myself some blaze rods and of course some ender pals. So, I did. Alright, that should do it. That should be plenty of ender pals. It's now time. It's now time. It is now time to take down the ender dragon. But before I left, I made sure to say goodbye to all my pets, like my axolotls, and of course Max, the Ravager. I had to do this. I had to defeat the Ender Dragon once and for all. So I headed to the stronghold, and there it was, the Ender Portal. So I placed in all the eyes of Ender, and the portal opened, and there it is. So I didn't hesitate, and I jumped through, and there she was, the Ender Dragon. But I knew what had to be done. I had to take down the end crystals as soon as possible. So that's what I did. Luckily, my shots were on point and I was hitting every shot. And just like that, there it is. All the end crystals have been destroyed. It is now time to take down the Ender Dragon. This is it. It is now time to end this fight once and for all. So I waited for the right opportunity and I struck, taking down the Ender Dragon. And there it is. Wow. We did it. Wow. There it is. We did it. We defeated the Ender Dragon. This was great. So the first thing I did is I gathered up all the XP that was here and I have to say, there was a lot of XP, which was amazing. But I couldn't forget about the Ender Egg. So I made sure to gather up that as well. And there it is. And there's only one last thing to do, travel back home. But then, as I was on my way back home, I could not believe my very own eyes. I could see my entire base has been set on fire. I could not believe this. Just look at this place, it's been completely destroyed. As I looked around, I could see nobody. Everybody was gone. And I also noticed that there was some TNT right here. But as I looked to my right, I could see there was this giant hole. And as I made a way down right here, I noticed that the villagers were gone. This was really bad. I could not believe this. They escaped. But then I thought about my pets. I wanted to see if they was all right. So I sprinted the fastest I could to the stable. And as I made a way over there, I could not believe my eyes. I could see Max has been eliminated. I couldn't believe it. I will get my revenge. As I made it up to my base, I could see my axolotls were safe. This was great, but sadly, we lost our Ravenger. But then, as I turned around, I could see my door was wide open. I knew this was bad, and I was right. All my stuff has been stolen. My totem of regeneration, and of course, all my emeralds. I could not believe this. Everything is gone. I can't believe it, my entire base has been completely destroyed. Just look at this place. I wonder who did this. I will get my revenge. In today's video, I have to survive 100 days as a Ravenger. Day one, I spawned into the world as a Ravenger. And I could see I've spawned right outside of this pillager outpost. This was great. I could see that there was some pillagers nearby. So I went to go and say hi. And I could see they were very happy to see me. Anyways, I wanted to go and see if I could find any loot. But sadly, as I made my way down to this outpost, I couldn't quite fit. I was a little bit too big to fit through this doorway. But don't worry, I decided to get myself some dirt. So I could make myself a way up instead. And as I made it to the top, I could see there was a chest. So I opened up the chest and found myself some potatoes, some wheat, some dark oak logs, and of course some XP bottles. 
Very nice. Well, as a ravenger, you get hungry very quickly. And if I was going to be surviving these hundred days, I would need plenty of food. So I went around taking down a few sheep and also decided to go and get myself some wood. So I could craft myself a wooden pickaxe. But we need to now find some stone. So I went around exploring and found this cliffside. And there it was, stone. This was amazing. So I gathered up some stone and made myself a furnace and cooked up all my food. And that's a lot better. We now have some cooked food. Well, well, I think it's now time we go exploring to see what we could find. So I headed out across the lands and by the next day, I couldn't believe it. There it was, a village. This was not good. I knew what had to be done. So I carefully made our way down to the village and I had to be careful that the villagers didn't see me. So I carefully snuck over and yep, there they was villagers. So I made sure to wait for the right opportunity and I struck, charging at the villagers. But unfortunately, the villagers saw me and started running. But luckily for me, I was a ravenger and I was a lot faster than the villagers. So I was easily able to catch up and take them down. But then, as I took down this villager right here, there he was, the iron golem. This was not good. I knew the iron golems did serious damage. And then out of nowhere, I was hit by the iron golem. And yep, he did some serious damage. But luckily, after a few swings, I was able to take down the iron golem. Wow, that was close. I think there's only one last thing to do, set the village on fire. So I made a flint steel and set the entire village on fire. Now this should show the villagers never to mess with me again. Wow, just look at this place, it's completely destroyed. Now this should show the iron golems and the villagers to never mess with me again. Wow, I think it's time we get out of here. Well, after taking down that village, I now wanted to build my very own base. So I went across the lands and found this spot, and I thought, here, looks like a perfect spot to build my very own base. But there's one thing we need to do before we build our base. I kind of needed some more food. So I decided to make my very own potato farm. So I flattened up all the ground and planted in some potatoes. And there it is, a very simple potato farm. Very nice. Okay, it's time to build our base, but first we'll need some materials. So I headed to the forest and got myself some oak wood and also collected some birch wood as well and also a load of stone i would need loads of stone for this build hey guess what i found off in the distance i could see that there was this spruce forest so i headed over there and collected some spruce wood which i'm sure this will look great for my build but then as i was collecting myself some spruce wood i couldn't help to notice but i could see there was something off in the distance and i could see that there was this isologer i couldn't believe this now i wonder what this isologer is doing but then he turned around and walked away I couldn't believe my very own eyes. So unfortunately, I couldn't speak with him. Oh well, hopefully one day we meet back up again. So day seven, I returned home and built my base. So I used some oak logs and also some stone bricks, which went very well with this build. And also did a bit of decorating, added some pillager banners around. And of course, you cannot forget about leaves. So I made sure to add those around as well. Added some storage so I could store some of my items. Placed in some furnaces and also some smokers so I could cook my food very quickly. And on day 11, here it is. It's just not look too bad if I do say so myself. We've got a nice pathway right here, also some fences and a tree. As you can see, we've got plenty of leaves around, some nice spruce wood, also the pillager banners, which look great. And if we enter our base, you can see we have some nice oak wood. And of course, a crafting table so I can craft my items, a bed so I can sleep, and of course, all my storage area. This is where we store all our items. Very nice. Well, I think it's time we go and check up on our potato farm to see how it's doing. And yep, it was doing amazing. I could see all the potatoes have grown up. This was great. So I collected myself some potatoes and then rushed back to my home to go and cook them. And then I patiently waited for all the potatoes to be cooked. And yep, that's a lot better. We now have some fresh food. Wow. Day 12, I think it's now time we go and get ourselves some armor. We don't have any, so I went out and went exploring to see if I could find a cave. And off in the distance, there it was, a cave. Hey, and also, there was some copper. Now I'll need this copper for my spyglass. So I collected some, and that should do it. That should be plenty of copper. But then, there it was, iron. This was just what I was looking for. But then, I stumbled across a mineshaft. I couldn't believe the odds. This was incredible. So I carefully made a way down and decided to go and get myself some chain. But then, you wouldn't believe what I found. I could see that there was this minecart. And as I opened up this minecart, there it was, a golden apple. Now I'll be sure to take this. But then, as I was exploring the caves, I stumbled across the Warden's Cave. And also, I didn't want to wake up the Warden, so I carefully made myself a way around. But as a Ravenger, you make a bit too much noise when you walk. And I accidentally woke up the Warden. 
I could tell he was not very happy. Oh no. I knew I had to stay quiet, so I tried to back up as quietly as I could. But unfortunately, the warden could sense I was here. This was really bad, so I sprinted for my life. I ran the fastest I could. If I got hit by the warden, it would be game over instantly. I didn't stand a chance. But luckily, I was able to get away. Enough to say, that was close. Wow. After escaping the warden, I was able to find this lush cave. I could see there were some moss blocks, so I collected some, and also some lapis. I would need this for enchanting, but then, there it was, diamonds. This was incredible, so I rushed over there as quick as I could and got myself some diamonds. And I have to say, finding diamonds is so easy. I was able to find myself so many diamonds. So after collecting a few diamonds, I decided to construct a diamond pickaxe, and I now wanted to go and find some obsidian, so I can make myself a nether portal, and also the enchantment table. Hey, and I also stumbled across this slime. So, I went to go and say hi, and me and this slime were his very good friends. But then, as I was exploring the caves, I stumbled across some axolotls. So, I wanted to keep these axolotls as my very own pets. So I got my water buckets, and collected some axolotls. And there it is, we now have some pets. Wow, wait a minute, is that some amethyst crystals? Yes it is. I was able to find myself some amethyst crystals. I'll need these amethyst crystals to make my spy glass. Wow, there it is. But then, as I was returning home, I couldn't believe it. I could see my base has been set on fire. This was not good. And also, there was these furnace golems. I had to stop them, so I rushed over the quick as I could and immediately started taking them down. And I have to say, these golems were extremely powerful. They did so much damage, but I knew I had to get through this if I wanted my base to survive. So I tried my best to take down the golems the best that I could, but then I accidentally stepped into some fire. But luckily I had a golden apple and I was okay. And luckily, after a few swings, I was able to take down the final furnace golem. I couldn't believe it. Just look at this place. Luckily, nothing was destroyed. Wow, that was really close. So the next day, I removed all the fire around my base. Thankfully, my base didn't get destroyed. But I definitely think it's time to make some iron armor. Just in case those furnace golems come back. So I made a full set of iron armor and also some diamond tools. Now this should keep me safe from those golems. But then I remembered about the pillagers. I wanted to go and check up on them to see if they was okay. So I sprinted the fast as I could back to the pillager outpost. But then I couldn't believe it. I could see the pillager outpost has been destroyed. I could not believe my very own eyes. I wonder who could have done this. Just look at this place. It's been ruined completely. Sadly, I wasn't quick enough and I couldn't save the pillagers. Oh well. So I decided to return back home. I can't believe it. Well, 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 I think it's now time we make a place for our axolotls. And here looks perfect. So I cleared out a bit of space, removing all the dirt that was in the way, and then decided to decorate the area up a little bit, adding some stone and also a load of decoration, like some new paths, some fences, and of course some flowers, which looked very nice. And finally, here it is. It does not look too bad if I do say so myself. And as you can see, we've added some spruce trees, which look awesome. Anyways, it's time to place in the axolotls, and I can see the axolotls were very happy happy with their new home. This was incredible. So I think it's now time we make the nether portal. And over here looks like a perfect spot. So I placed in all the obsidian and there it is, the nether portal. So I didn't hesitate and jumped through. And as I made it to the other side, I could see there was nothing special really, just a typical nether, but there was some bones. Now I'll need these bones for my potato farm. So I collected some. Anyways, my journey continues across the nether, and I found a crimson forest, so I collected some crimson wood. And also, you wouldn't believe it, there it was, a bastion. And luckily for me, I was able to find all this gold. This was great, I could make so many golden apples with all this gold, so I collected up all the gold that I could get. Hey, and I also found this chest, which contained a enchanted golden apple, and also, I found a netherite ingot. Now I'll be sure to take this. I could make myself a netherite tool, which was great. So anyways, I left the bastion, and I now needed to find myself some blaze rods. So I went around exploring, and luckily, I was able to find the nether fortress. And yep, there they was, blazes. And if I was going to be making potions, I would need nether warts. So I had to go and find a new fortress. Luckily for me, I was able to find one nearby, and I was able to find this chest which contained some diamonds. 
Now, I'll be sure to take these, but then, as I turn this corner, there it was, never warts. So I collected some never warts and also some soul sand so I can make my very own never wart farm. And the next day, I went to the warped forest and got myself some ender pearls. And that should do it. It is now time to return home. But then, as I was returning home, I heard this noise. And as I turned around, I could see that there was this wandering trader. So I thought, why not go and speak with him? To tell him what happened here. So I told the wandering trader about what happened, about these furnace golems, and asked him if he has seen any. He told me that he has not seen any furnace golems whatsoever. So I told the wandering trader if he would go and look to see if he could find any for me. He told me he would, but he would want some emeralds for it. So I said I didn't have any emeralds, but I did have some diamonds. But luckily, he accepted my offer. So I gave him the diamonds, and the wandering trader told me that he would go and have a look to see if he could find any furnace golems. Now let's hope the wandering trader returns. Anyways, I think it's now time to make some potions. But first, we'll need a potion station. So I'll place in some stone bricks, some granite, some bricks, and also some more stone bricks with some lanterns, some item frames, placed in a few chests, placed in the brewing stands, and finally placed in the water. Nothing too special, but it looks awesome. Anyways, it's time to make some potions. So I started by making some health two potions and also a few strength potions. You never know, I might need these. But that's not all, oh no. I also decided to make the enchantment table and there it is. We now have the enchantment table, but of course the enchantment table would need a place to go. So I built an enchantment room and I have to say, it does not look too bad with all the trees around, really look nice. <laughs> Anyways, it's time to place in the enchantment table and there it is. But we're missing one thing, we need some bookshelves. So I think it's about time we go and get some. So I made some eyes of Ender and it's now time to go and find the strong hold. Finally on day 40, there it was, the stronghold. And also, I landed straight into the library. This was great. I could see there was loads of books here. So I gathered up all the books that I could get. But then, there it was, the end portal. Wow. So what I decided to do was to place in my eyes of ender. And yeah, we only need a few more. So I get home and make a bunch of bookshelves and place them in, of course. And yep, there it is. The enchantment room is pretty much done. So it's now time to do some enchanting. So I enchanted my pickaxe to get myself fortune free. I couldn't believe it. But I do definitely think it's about time we upgrade our armor. It's not looking so good, is it? So I headed to the caves and there it was diamonds. This was unbelievable. And whoa, well, that should do it. That's plenty of diamonds. So I'll return home and make a full set of diamond armor and also some diamond tools. And just like that, we now have a full set of diamond armor and tools. Wow, there it is. Hold on, we're not finished just yet. I now need to get myself loads of levels so I can enchant all my diamond armor so I collected up all the levels that I could get. And that should do it. That should be plenty of levels. It's now time to return home and enchant all our armor. Wow, just like that, we now have enchanted gear and tools. Now we should be pretty safe from those furnace golems. Well, 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 I think it's now time we go exploring. So I headed out across the lands, searching to see what I could find. But then, off in the distance, I could see that there was this abandoned village. I was very intrigued and I wanted to go and check it out. I could see this place was completely abandoned, but there was this one villager, so I said hello to him. Hey, and I also could see there was loads of hay here. This was great, so I collected up some hay and also found some glass furnaces. You never know, I might need these. So I decided to go and collect them. Wait a minute, is that Never portal? Yes it is. I found myself this never portal. And also there was this chest which contained another enchanted golden apple. I couldn't believe the odds. I was super happy. 
Anyways, my journey continues on sea and off in the distance, I was able to find a shipwreck. This was great. I could see that there was this chest. So I opened up and I found myself some emeralds, some diamonds, and also some iron. Found a second chest, which contained a treasure map. This was great. We can now go and find ourselves some buried treasure. So I sailed to seas and I could not believe it. I could see that there was this jungle. This was amazing. Anyways, after that, I went searching for my buried treasure. Now the treasure should be around here somewhere. So I started digging, and after a bit of digging, there it was, the buried treasure. And yep, there it was, all this loot. You can see there was loads of emeralds, iron, some gold, and some diamonds. Wow, guess what I found? I found some melons. Now I'll definitely be needing these for some potions. So I collected myself some. And also, as I was at the jungle, I thought, why not go and get myself some cocoa beans? So that's what I did. And surprisingly, I stumbled across some pandas. So I went over to them, and I went to go and say hi, and I decided to give some of the pandas some bamboo, and I could tell this made them very happy. Just look at them, they was very happy pandas. Anyways, it's time to leave the jungle now. So I said my final goodbyes, and I headed out. But then, as I was exploring across the lands, I stumbled across this ice spikes biome. This was great, so I went around exploring, and by the next day, I could see off in the distance, that there was this building. I was very intrigued, so I went for a closer look, and to my surprise, I could see it was this village that has been burnt down. Now I wonder what happened here. Just look at this place. It's been completely destroyed. All these buildings have been burnt to the ground. Oh wait, what's this? I could see off the distance that there was this fort that was still on fire. So I rushed over there the quick as I could, and as I made it over, I could see this place was ruined. I wonder what happened here. It must have been those furnace golems. But I had to go and check it out. So I entered the base, and I could see this base was some sort of pillager base of some sort. I couldn't believe it. This place was ruined. But then, there he was again, the Isologer. This must be the Isologer's base. I best go and speak with him. So I made myself a way over as soon as possible. Anyways, I finally made it over to the Isologer, and I went to go and speak with him. I told him, what happened here? It looks like the furnace golems have come by and destroyed your base. He told me, this was no furnace golem, and he told me that he needed my help. We needed to speak. So later on that night, me and the Isologer went to go and sit around the fire. He wanted to tell me his story. So he sat around the fire, and the Isologer said, One day, as I returned back home, I could see my base has been destroyed. Now I've dealt with the furnace golems before, this was not the furnace golems, this was someone a lot more powerful, but if it couldn't get any worse, I had some villagers that were trapped, and unfortunately they escaped, these villagers were dangerous, but unfortunately I failed, I couldn't let this happen, I had to go and find them, so I set out on a journey across the snowy blizzards, searching for these villagers. Finally, after a long search, I couldn't believe my eyes. There they was. There's no way. The villagers have taken over one of our outposts. This place is now ruined. I can't believe it. They've burnt it down to the ground. I failed. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I told the Isologer we needed to go back to the outpost to take down those furnace golems for what they did. The Isologer happily agreed and said we should probably get some rest and head out in the morning. We could not let the furnace golems and the villagers take over our outpost. So we mounted up and we headed out to the outpost. Finally, the Isologer told me we was now getting closer to the outpost. So I made our way up this hill right here, and there it was, the outpost. And we could see villagers had turned it into some sort of station of some sort. The Isologer said, if we needed to go, we needed to go now. We needed to end this as soon as possible. I knew what had to be done. So I rushed down the mountain and immediately started taking down these furnace golems. The 
furnace golems could not stop us. Me and the Isolager were extremely powerful. They didn't stand a chance against us. The Isolager told me to wait here for a minute. Once I was waiting for the Isolager, I wanted to take a look at this place. I couldn't believe it. I could see that there was all these furnace golems ready to deploy. This was not good. And also this building. Now I wonder what they're using this for. Whatever this is, cannot be good. Anyways, I returned back to the Isolager and he told me he was able to find some TNT. So we knew what to do. I mean, wow. Just look at this place. It's been completely ruined. This is showing the villagers. Anyways, it's time to go and speak with the Isolager. The Isolager told me, we've done it. We've done what we needed to do, but he said we should probably go our own separate ways now, just in case we're followed by the villagers. So we said our final goodbyes and the Isolager left. Well, 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 we finally made it back home, and I have to say, it's nice to be back home. But there's one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to check up on my potato farm to see how it was doing, and it was doing very well. So I collected up some potatoes, and also went to go and say hi to my axolotls, and I could see they was very happy to see me. Ah, I almost forgot about this Neverite ingot, so I decided to put this Neverite onto my pickaxe. And there it is, we now got Neverite pickaxe. But I wanted to get myself some more Neverite. So I headed to the Never and got myself loads more. And wow, that should definitely do it. That should be plenty of Neverite. Wait a minute, is that a Bastion? Yes it is, I found myself a Bastion. And I could see that there was all this gold. Now I was definitely not going to leave this behind. And once I was in the Never, I also thought, why not go and get myself some more Blaze Rods. So that's what I did. And also some more Ender Pearls. I will definitely be needing these. That should do it, time to return home. Day 95, I returned home, smell up all the ancient debris that I collected, and also decided to repair my armor. It was kind of broken. And then finally, I turned it all into Neverite, and that should do it. Wow, there it is. It's now time. It's now time to go and defeat the Ender Dragon. So I gathered everything I needed for my chest, all the stuff I'll need for this fight. And before I left, I made sure to say goodbye to my pets. This might be the last time I would ever see them. So I said my final goodbyes and I headed out to the stronghold. And finally, there it was, the end portal. I knew what had to be done. So I placed in all the eyes of Ender and the portal opened. This is it, there's no turning back now. I was ready for this. So I jumped through the portal and there she was. The Ender Dragon. I knew I had to be quick to take down all the End Crystals. So I used my bow to take down all the End Crystals. And that should do it. I took down all the End Crystals. It is now time to end this fight once and for all. So I rushed down as quick as I could and I started attacking the Ender Dragon, doing serious damage. shot into the sky by the ender dragon. I couldn't believe this, but luckily I had a god apple, so I had that. And I have to say, that was close. Anyways, it is now time to end this fight once and for all. So I'm waiting for the right opportunity, and I struck, taking down the ender dragon. And there it is.
is. Wow, we did it. We defeated the Ender Dragon. And I can see there was loads of XP here, which was great. And also, I could not forget about the Ender Egg. So I made sure to go and collect that as well. Wow, there it is. Anyways, it is now time to return home and make a place for my Ender Egg. So I cleared out a bit of space and used some quart blocks and also some bone blocks, which went very well with this build. And finally, on day 99, here it is. It looks pretty awesome if I do say so myself. Anyways, it's time to place in the Ender Egg. And wow, there it is. But then, I can see the Wandering Trader has returned. And I can see he wanted to tell me something. He told me that he was able to find a Furnace Golem base not too far away. And he wanted to go and show me immediately. He told me to hurry. We couldn't be too long. So, I followed the Wandering Trader across the lands to this mysterious base. And finally on day 100, we cannot be far now. How much further is this place? <coughs> the wandering trader told me it was not much further. It was almost there. So I continued to follow him. But then the wandering trader stopped. I was a bit confused. And he told me this was a trap. I couldn't believe it. But then out of nowhere, I fell into this trap. And as I fell, I could see that there was these three villagers just looking at me. Now this could not be good. In today's video, I have to survive 100 days as a zombie pillager. And also, I have three objectives. First, take down and destroy a village. Second, build my very own outpost. And finally, find a cure and transform myself back into a regular pillager. Can I survive these 100 days as a zombie pillager in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching and find out. So here we go, our journey begins on day one. The first thing I noticed, so I could see I was in this abandoned outpost. So I thought, why not step outside and get myself some fresh air? And the second I headed outside, I was set on fire by the sun. But I needed to make a run for it to this other tree. So I backed up and sprinted the fast as I could. Luckily, I made it across just fine. But then, off in the distance, I noticed that there was this building. I had to go and investigate this. So I made myself away through the trees, trying to keep out the sun. And then, I came to this cliffside. I could see there was a whole base set up here. But this place looked abandoned. Now, I wonder who lived here. But then, as I was looking around, there it was. But Potatoes. I was getting kind of hungry and needed to eat, so I made myself away over to the potatoes and after a short time, I made it over there and collected some food. As I was collecting myself some potatoes, I could see off in the distance that there was this chest. I was very excited to go and check it out, but I needed a way to get across. There's no way I'll make it over there. But don't worry, I had a genius plan. I decided to build my own tunnel leading to this chest. So I used my bare hands and broke all the dirt. And finally, after a long time, I made it over to the outpost and made myself a way up. And finally, after a bit of time, I made it to the top and there it was, a chest. So I opened up this chest and I found myself an axe, some potatoes, a fishing rod and also an iron helmet. Now this will keep me safe from the sun. And also, there was this mysterious book. I wonder what this could be. I have to go and check it out. So I opened up this book and I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. But as I switched to the next page, I could see there was some coordinates. Now I wonder where this leads. Now I'm definitely not leaving this book behind. Well then, I think it's now time to get ourselves some wood. So I used my brand new axe and collected some wood. And you might be asking, why do I need this wood? See, I wanted to make myself a wooden pickaxe. So I did. And then I had a genius idea. I thought, why not just sit in a pool of water and wait for the sun to set? So that's exactly what I did. And just like that, it is now nighttime. So I traveled across the world and surprisingly, I was able to find some of my friends. This was truly amazing. But then, as I was collecting myself some food, I couldn't believe my eyes. There it was, a village. I knew what had to be done. I needed to go over there and turn the villagers into zombies. So I carefully made myself a way over to the village and there he was, the Iron Golem. I had to watch out for him. If I got hit by the Iron Golem, it would be game over instantly. But luckily for me, I snuck past the Iron Golem and I entered this house where there was three villagers. So I started attacking them, turning them into zombies. But then, as I took down this villager right here, I could see there he was, the Iron Golem, taking down my friends. This was not allowed. I had to go and stop the Iron Golem. So I rushed over there the quickest I could. And wow, there it is. We did it. We've taken down the Iron Golem and we've turned all the villagers into zombies. Wow, this should show the villagers. 
Anyways, the next day I watched the sunrise and thought why not go to the caves. This would be a perfect opportunity. So I entered the cave and jumped over some lava. Once I was in the caves, I collected some stone, some iron and also some copper. Now I'd need this copper for my spyglass. Hey, a lush caves. This was great. I found myself a lush caves. So I collected some moss blocks and then noticed that there was all these fish. Now I wonder how they ended up here. Hey, but I also noticed that there was some amethyst crystals. This was great. I could now make my spyglass. After that, I made myself a bucket. And once I was in the caves, I found this axolotl. And I wanted to keep him as my very own pet. So I did. But then... As I was making myself a way down into the caves, there it was, diamonds. This was truly amazing. I couldn't believe it. Wow, I was super happy. I think it's now time we build our very own base. Here looks like a perfect spot. So I placed in my furnace, crafting table, and also my chests. So I could store my items, of course. And then I did a bit of terraforming. And I accidentally got too close to the edge of this ravine and slipped. Oops. I suppose once I'm down here, I might as well collect some stone. After collecting all those blocks, I was getting kind of hungry. So I thought, why not build myself a potato farm? Nothing special, really. Just a very, very simple potato farm. Well, I think it's time to build our very own outpost. And here looks great. But first, I will need loads and loads of materials. So I headed to the swamp and collected some clay. And also collected some sugarcane. I'm going to be needing this. Alright, that should do it. That should be all the materials we need. So I began construction on my very own outpost. So I placed in some cobblestone, some dark oak slabs, and also some dark oak logs. Which looked very nice. A quick update on the build, not looking too bad. But we've still got a long ways to go. So I best get back to work. And here it is does not look too bad whatsoever. As you can see, we added some vines around, some leaves, and of course some bricks, which look very nice. And yeah, I think it looks awesome, but we need to go and check out the interior. As you can see, we've got a crafting table right here, a bed, also some chests and some furnaces. And over here, we have the mysterious book. Day 12, I think it's time we go and check up on our food farm. And yep, it was doing amazing. I could see all the crops have grown up. This was truly amazing. Hey, I almost forgot. I almost forgot about my axolotl. She would need her very own home. And I thought, why not here? Here looks like a perfect spot to build our home. So I got to work on making this place look very nice. And I have to say, it does not look too bad. So I placed in my axolotl and I could tell she was very happy. Wow. But then, off in the distance, I could see that there was somebody on top of this tree. Now I wonder who this is. But then they turned around and walked away. I can't believe it. I wonder who that was. Well, 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 I think it's now time to go and get ourselves some obsidian. So I made a diamond pickaxe and headed to the caves. And there it was, lava. So I placed down my water bucket and collected myself some obsidian. I will need plenty of this for the nether portal. But we had a slight problem. I needed some flint. So I set off on a journey and found some. That should do it. So I went home and built the nether portal. And there it is. The nether portal. Wow. So I made my flint and steel and lit up the nether portal. And as I entered through, I could see it was extremely misty. But as I turned around, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. There it was. A nether fortress. And also, I noticed that there were some bones. Now I'll need this for my future potato farm. And then I entered the fortress and started to take down some blazes. And surprisingly, these blazes put up a bit of a fight, but luckily for me, I was able to take them down. But then, out of nowhere, there it was, all these other blazes. There were so many of them, I had to get out of here. So I left the fortress and continue exploring through the nether. And surprisingly, I stumbled across a nearby bastion. So I carefully entered the bastion. I had to be careful. There was hoglins everywhere. But then, off in the distance, there they was. Chests. I had to go and check these out. So I made myself way over to these chests. And surprisingly, they had some decent loot. Like an iron block, a gold block, and a piece of ancient debris. This was great. But even better, I found this other chest, which had a crossbow in it. Now, if you didn't know, pillagers love crossbows. Alright, that was it. There was nothing else at the bastion. So I left the bastion. And surprisingly, I found a new nether fortress. So I carefully made myself a way over to this fortress and entered. And surprisingly, I was able to find some nether warts. This was amazing. This was just what I was looking for. I can now make potions. 
Aye, that should do it. Time to travel home. So I safely make it back home, and the first thing I did is I made some brewing stands. And I think it's about time we make a place for some potions. So I used some bricks and also some granite, placed in some stone bricks, and also some stone slabs. And of course, you can't forget about leaves, so I made sure to place them around as well. And then finally, I added in the chests, placed in the brewing stands, and placed in some water. But I think it's about time we make some potions. So I thought, why not make some fire resistant potions? This would keep me very safe from the sun. This was great. Wow. Well, 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 I think it's now time to go and investigate this mysterious book and find out what it's about. So I opened the book back up and I wanted to see the coordinates again. I could see this place was pretty far away. Now I wonder where these coordinates lead. But before I left, I made sure to make my spyglass. I'm going to be needing this. Anyways, I set off on my journey. But then, after days of days of traveling, I stumbled across this village. I could see this place was ruined. I wonder what happened here. Just look at this place. It's been burnt down and destroyed by someone. I can't believe it. Everything's ruined. It's still on fire. All these buildings are abandoned. There's no one here. And yeah, just look at this place. It's been completely destroyed. I can't believe it. But then, as I was looking around, I noticed off in the distance, there was this woodland mansion. So I used my spyglass to get a closer look. And I could see this place was also destroyed. I wonder what happened. And I couldn't believe it. This must be where this mysterious book takes me. So I rushed over there the quickest I could. And as I got over there, I could see this forest has been destroyed. Anyways, I continue my investigation. But then, as I made myself a way up right here, I entered the Woodland Mansion. I could see all the trees are starting to grow back. So, I went around the Woodland Mansion to see if I could find anything. And surprisingly, I found this room. There was nobody here. And as I was walking, I noticed off to my left, there was some chests. Now maybe there's some decent loot here. So I opened up this chest right here and found some emeralds. This was great. But even better, as I opened up this other chest right here, there it was, a totem of undying. I couldn't believe it. Well, I guess there's nobody here. I best get out of here. And maybe I can find someone else who can help me with this book. Now, there's got to be someone who could help me with this book. So I continue my journey across the land, and off in the distance, I could see that there was this tiger biome. So I headed over there, and surprisingly, as I made up this hill right here, I noticed off in the distance that there was these buildings. Now, I wonder who lived here. So I went around looking. And then I stumbled across a wandering trader. I couldn't believe it. This was awesome. So I approached this wandering trader and asked him if he could help me. I could see he was a bit shocked. So I told him I had this mysterious book and I needed his help. So I passed the book to the wandering trader and he had a good look at it and told me he did not understand it whatsoever. But he did offer me some emeralds for it and I told him it wasn't for sale and I would like my book back. The wandering trader told me he didn't understand that text, but there might be someone who does. He said, nearby there's some villagers at a snowy base, and maybe they could help me. But he would only tell me where they are if I gave him some emeralds. Luckily for me, I found some emeralds at the Woodland Mansion. So I gave him some emeralds, and he told me there was not too far away. And then he gave me this coordinates. And the wandering trader said I should probably get on my way. Now let's hope these villagers can help me. So I set off on a journey across the lands, searching for these villagers. And after a couple days of searching, I stumbled across the snowy biome. This is where the wandering trader said they would be. So I continue investigating across the snow. But then, as I made myself way up this hill right here, there it was, a illager base. This has to be the place the wandering trader was talking about. So I rushed down the mountain the quick as I could and made our way over to the base. And luckily, I could see there they was, all these villagers. This was great. And also there was an ice soldier. This was great. 
I'm sure all these illagers could help me with this book. So I approached this isologer and told him I needed his help. But the isologer was not so happy. Oh no. I told him I needed his help. I had this mysterious book and I needed to understand what it said. The isologer was not having it. He told me to leave immediately. If not, he would send his troops after me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I told the isologer I was not gonna leave. I really needed his help. I could see the isologer was not so happy. And in seconds, I was getting shot by these pillagers. This was not good. I had to get out of here quick. So I backed up and started running. I can't believe it. I've just been betrayed. The pillagers are supposed to be on my side. Just look at them. I wonder why they have done this. Can't believe it. I suppose we'll never figure out what this book says. And I have to say, those pillagers did some serious damage. Well, I think it's time we go and get ourselves some armor. So, it's time to go on a mining trip. And there it was, a mine shaft. So I went around searching, and I stumbled across some gold. Now I might need this for golden apples. But even better than gold, there it was, a minecart, which contained a name tag. Hey, and also, I stumbled across a mob dungeon. This was awesome. There was another name tag, and also, a mending book. Wow, there it is. I'll be sure to take this. Hey, and I also found some lapis. This would be really useful for enchanting. So I'll be sure to take this. But then, as I was making myself a way through the caves, there it was, diamonds. This was amazing. Whoa, well, that should do it. That should be plenty of diamonds. But then, as I was on my way back home, I found another bob spawner. There it was, a enchanted golden apple. Wow. Anyways, I get back home and make myself a full set of diamond armor. This should surely keep me safe. Can't forget about tools. I made those as well. Hey, and you know what? I think it's time we make the enchantment table. So I did, and there it is. But of course, the enchantment table would need a place to go. So I thought over there looks like a perfect spot. So I got to work on building an enchantment room. Nothing special, just use some birch wood and also some dark oak wood. And also, you can't forget about paths. So I made one of them as well. But there's one thing I'm missing. I need some leaves. So I placed some of them around as well. And might I say, this place looks incredible. Just look at this place. There's plenty of leaves around, some chests, some lanterns, and all the dark oak wood looks awesome. And there's only one last thing to do, placing the enchantment table. And there it is. Wow, there's only one last thing to do now. We need to get ourselves some bookshelves. This means I need to go back to the nether once again and get myself some blaze rods, and also some ender pearls. Okay, that should do it. That should be plenty of ender pearls. So I made some eyes of ender and went to go and find the stronghold. Anyways, by the next day, after a bit of digging, there it was, the library. I couldn't believe it. This was awesome. So I gathered up all the bookshelves that I could collect. Now as I say, there was a lot of bookshelves here. Anyways, after collecting all the books, I went around exploring, and guess what I found? Another library. Yeah, I don't need any more books. And that should do it. The enchantment room is now done. But I do think it's about time we do some enchanting. So I enchanted my diamond pickaxe, and I couldn't believe it. Wow, there it is. After that, I enchanted my diamond helmet, and also thought why not put that mending book onto my diamond pickaxe. Now, we have the ultimate pickaxe. Wow. Hey, and also, I thought why not go and name my axe Otto? So I went to go and call her Lilo. I thought that was a perfect name for my axe Otto. After that, I headed back to the nether once again and got myself some quartz. I needed to get myself loads of levels, so I collected up all the quartz blocks that I could get. And I have to say, 46 levels should be plenty. So I rushed back home and enchanted the rest of my diamond armor, getting myself some amazing loot. And wow, there it is. We now got a full set of enchanted diamond armor and tools. This was great. So this place is looking quite empty. I think it's time we do some building, but first I'll need some materials. So I headed to the dark oak forest and collected some dark oak wood and also some oak wood. 
and I was thinking, here looks like a perfect spot to build another outpost. So I got to work on building one. Used a variety of different blocks, like some dark oak wood, some dark oak logs, and also some oak wood. And what's a base without a proper path? I'm not sure. So I made some paths and also placed in some fences. And yeah, that's building one pretty much done. Building two, I wanted to make myself a storage room. So I got to work on making one. So I used loads of stone bricks and also loads and loads of oak wood. And here it is. It does not look too bad whatsoever. Starting off right here, we have a brand new outpost, which looks pretty good if I do say so myself. I mean, just look at this view. You can also see I changed up the potato farm a little bit, gave it some fences, which look great. Also made another giant potato farm. You know, you can never have too many potatoes. And finally, our storage room. And as I say, this building looks amazing. As you can see, we've got loads of barrels around and also loads of chests. This should be plenty of storage. Well, 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 I think it's now time we go on a bit of an adventure. So I headed out across the lands and found some pumpkins. So I collected some. You never know, I might need these. Wait a second, is that a desert temple? Yes, it is. So I entered the desert temple and I found myself a golden apple. Wow. But even better, there was a second chest, which had diamonds in it and also another golden apple. I couldn't believe the odds. Anyways, my journey continues across the seas and I found myself a Shipwreck. And surprisingly, there was this chest, which had an XP bottle, loads of emeralds, and also some iron. Hey, and also I found a second shipwreck. And guess what I found? A treasure map. This was truly amazing. We can now go and find ourselves some treasure. So I travelled across the seas, searching for this buried treasure. And after a little bit of investigating, I found the buried treasure. Wow. And there it was, all this loot. I can't believe what I found. I found so much gold, iron, diamonds, and also emeralds. Wow, what an amazing find. So I collected up all the treasure and continue exploring across the seas. And I found a mushroom biome. So I went looking around to see if I could find a mushroom cow. And surprisingly, I found one. And I quickly noticed that there wasn't any other mushroom cows here. So what I decided to do was to give the mushroom cow a friend. And there it was. I could tell the mushroom cow was very happy. Wow. But then, as I was exploring, I discovered that there was a jungle right here. So I didn't hesitate and I rushed over there the quickest I could and started to collect some bamboo and also some jungle leaves. You never know, I might need these. Hey, and also, if I was going to be making some cookies, I would need some cocoa beans. Wait a second, is that a jungle temple? Yes, it is. So I entered the jungle temple and tried to avoid the traps and then found myself some more gold. Very nice. And I have to say, that was an amazing trip. I think it's time to return back home. Wow, I have to say, that was an amazing trip. We got ourselves loads of materials, which was great. But then, as I entered my home, I could see the mysterious book is gone. It must be those pillagers. They must have came to my base and taken the book. This is not good. I need to stop the pillagers. I need to get my book back. So I started preparing for an attack. So I collected myself some more food and also decided to make a load of strength potions. I'm definitely going to be needing these. Can't forget about a shield. If I was going to be taking down these pillagers, I will need the best equipment that I can get. Okay, I'm now ready. I'm now ready to take down the pillagers. So I rushed as quick as I could and traveled back to the Illager base. And finally, the next day, there it was, the Illager base. I had to confront the Illagers and get back my book. And as I made myself away towards the base, I could see there was no pillagers outside. I wonder where they are. But as I got closer towards the Illager base, and yep, there he was, the Isolager. And before I entered, I loaded up my crossbow and made a way over to the Isolager. Finally, I made it over there and went to go confront the Isolager and told him 
I've come back from my book and to hand it over immediately. The Isologer was not happy. He instantly told his troops to start firing at me. And in seconds, I was getting shot by pillagers. This was not good. I had to get out of it quick. And in seconds, I was outnumbered. There was way too many pillagers. I had to run for it. So I sprinted the fastest I could. But unfortunately, I was getting chased by pillagers. This was not good. If I got stuck, it would be game over. So I continued running the fastest I could. I had to get away from these pillagers. So I sprinted the fastest I could, and finally I came to this cliffside. I could see I was trapped. This was not good. But then, out of nowhere, this villager jumped down and saved me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then I remembered, this was the villager that I saw earlier. I wonder why he's helping me. And I could see the villager wanted to tell me something. He told me to follow him. He wanted to help me. I wasn't sure if I could trust him or not. But he just saved my life. Anyways, I followed the villager, and I wanted to ask the villager why he helped me. The villager turned around and said he wanted to tell me his story. One day, I woke up as a zombie. I built my very own bases, and everything was going just fine. But one day, I noticed that there was this note, so I picked it up, and it had some coordinates on it. I had to go and check this out, so I set off on a journey. And after a long search, I found this chest in the middle of the desert. But to my surprise, the chest was empty. There was nothing inside. And as I thought all hope was lost, I looked up and could not believe what I saw. I was being watched by someone. And then they turned around and walked away. I had to go and follow them. And finally, we came to a stop. And I could see it was this villager. But before I could do anything, he pushed this button and I fell into this trap. And then the villager threw a potion over me, and I turned back into a regular villager. I couldn't believe it. The villager was here to help me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The villager said he wanted to help me out. He wanted to take me back to the village. I could see this villager just wanted to help me. So we mounted up and headed to the village. Finally, we make it to the village, and then the villager said that I should follow him. So me and the villager, we walked over to the village, and then we stumbled across these golems. I told him, what kind of golems are these? He told me, there was furnace golems, a new type of golem to stop the illagers. I couldn't believe it. There's so many of them. And I got a little bit too distracted, and the villager said, we should probably carry on. So I continued to follow the villager, and I wondered where he was taking me. And surprisingly, he told me to step on this coal block. So I did, and the second I stepped on the block, I started to move down. I could see it was entering some sort of lab. And then, as we make it down to the bottom, I noticed that there was another villager. So I went for a closer look and I couldn't believe it. This must be the villager that saved the other villager. And then the villager said that if I wanted to be cured, I needed to head down the hallway and meet a scientist. I couldn't believe it. I was gonna be cured once and for all. So I made myself a way down the hallway and as I was making myself a way down the hallway, I discovered that there was these rooms. Now I wonder what are in these rooms. I could see there was these weapons and tools. I've never seen anything like it ever. I wonder what this is. And also there's a totem of undying and it's enchanted. I wonder what that means. Now I wonder what's in the other room. And as I entered the other room, I could see that there was this dragon egg. Huh, I wasn't sure what to think of this. But anyways, we should go and find the scientist. So I left the room and went to go and investigate. And after a short time, I found him. I could see the scientist was very shocked to see me. And then I said to the scientist that I was sent by the villager to be cured and turned back to a normal pillager. The scientist was kind of confused and he wasn't sure if it was going to work, but he said it was worth a shot. So he told me to step into the potion machine and hopefully it works. 
and after a bit of time, I woke back up and I looked around and the scientist told me it worked. I've turned back to a pillager. I couldn't believe it. So I had a look at myself and wow, there it is. We're finally being cured. So I thanked the scientist and the scientist told me not to worry about it. But he had other projects that needed to be done. So it's probably best if we leave the scientist. And I went to go and speak with the villager and he told me he needed my help. Apparently the king villager wanted to go and capture the isologer and he would need my help to do it. So I didn't hesitate and I went to go and help the villager. So me and the villager, we headed out across the lands. So we travelled for days and finally we arrived at our destination and there it was, the Illager base. I knew what had to be done, I had to go down there and capture the Isologer. And then the villager told me, once I have the Isologer, head to these coordinates. There will be a trap set up here and hopefully we can trap the Isologer. Anyways the villager wished me luck and also, I wonder if I could find my mysterious book. I suppose once I'm here, it doesn't hurt to look. But then, there they was, pillagers, guarding the entrance. This was really risky, but I didn't have a choice. But luckily, as I made it over there, the pillagers didn't recognize me. This was great, so I carefully entered the base. I wanted to find my book, so I went around looking for it. I opened up all the chests that I could, but unfortunately, I couldn't find it. I can't give up, I have to find my book. So, I continue my search. I entered the outpost and made myself a way upstairs, being really careful, and then I found this chest, but I could see there was a pillager. I had to be extremely quiet, so I carefully opened up the chest, but unfortunately, there was no book. This wasn't good. I wonder where it could be. I wonder if these pillagers know where it is, but I can't go and tell them. But then, as I was looking around, I noticed off in the distance that there was this other building. I haven't checked over there just yet. Maybe it's over there. So I rushed over there as the quick as I could and entered and I started searching around. But unfortunately, once again, I could not find my mysterious book. So I headed upstairs and as I headed upstairs, I could see there he was, the Isologer. This was not good. The Isologer told me where I came from and now I thought this was a perfect opportunity to lure out the Isologer. I told him I came from a woodland mansion not too far away from here. And then the Isologer told me if I've seen the Evoker, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to lure out the Isologer. So I told him, yes, I knew where the Evoker was. I could take you to him. The Isologer said we should leave immediately. He's been looking for the Evoker for a very long time. Wow, I can't believe that worked. So I told the Isologer to follow me. Finally, on day 100, the Isologer said, How much further is it? I told him, It wasn't much further, but it was almost there. This must be it. This must be the trap. Now let's hope this works. So I turned around and told the Isologer, This was a trap. The Isologer could not believe it. And before he could do anything, I pushed his button and he fell. Wow, we did it. So I rushed down the quickest I could. And yep, there he was, the Isologer. I could tell. He was not happy. Wow. And then the villager arrived and told me the king villager will be proud. Wow. I can't believe that worked. But speaking of the king villager, there he was. He couldn't believe that I did it. And then he said if he should know about anything else. I told him apparently they're talking about some sort of evoker and they're trying to find him. And the second I said that, I could see something was wrong. And it was. The villager turned around and started sprinting the fast he could. I wonder why. In today's video, I have to survive 100 days as the Enchanter. 
And also, I have three objectives. First, craft myself the enchantment table. Second, build my very own secret base. And finally, find out who's been destroying my Minecraft world. Ah. Can I survive these 100 days as the enchanter in hardcore Minecraft? Keep watching and find out. So here we go, our journey begins on day one. And the first thing I noticed is I could see I was at this woodland mansion. And also, I found this chest, which contains some apples, some bread, and also some torches. I could also see that there was this enchanted book. And when I went to go and use this enchanted book, I could see it has given me more hearts. This was incredible. Anyways, I wonder what else I can find around here. So I went searching around the Woodland Mansion, and after a bit of searching, I found this room right here. And I could see that there was this other chest right here. And there it was, a totem of undying. Wow, I was now super happy. Anyways, after that, what I decided to do was to go around the mansion to see if I could find anything else. And surprisingly, I found myself a pickaxe and also some more torches. And I also noticed that there was this other chest which contained some iron axes. I'll be sure to take one of these. Anyways, now what I wanted to do was to go outside and collect myself some materials. So I headed to the nearest mountain and collected some stone, some coal, and if I was going to be surviving these 100 days, I would need plenty of food. So I took down some cows, collected up a bit of dark oak wood, and then what I decided to do was to make myself some leather boots. Now these should surely keep me safe. But then I noticed the sun was setting. This was not good. But then I remembered mobs didn't attack me and I would be okay. So I continued exploring and I found myself some iron. This was great. But then, as I left the caves, there it was. A village. I knew what I had to do. So I carefully made myself a way over to the village. And then I entered this villager's house and started attacking him. I wanted to get myself some emeralds. But then, as I took down this villager right here, there he was, the Iron Golem, and I almost got hit by him. That was close, and I could see I was trapped. I needed to get out of here, and as I made a run for it, I was hit by the Iron Golem. Maybe I shouldn't get that close to the Iron Golem again. So, I switched my crossbow and started shooting arrows at the Iron Golem. And finally, after a few shots, the Iron Golem has been defeated. There's only one last thing to do, set the entire village on fire. So, I made a flint and steel and set the entire village on fire. By the next day, all the villagers' houses were ruined. So what I decided to do was to take all their food and equipment. And I also found all the villagers' emeralds. The villagers won't be needing this anymore. And yeah, I don't think the villagers and the iron golems will be so happy to find out the entire village has been destroyed. Anyways, I finally make it back to the Woodland Mansion, and now what I wanted to do was to make some chests. And also, once I was at the village, I found this bell, which is quite nice. But I definitely think it's about time we go on a bit of a mining trip. So, I made some pickaxes and headed to the nearest caves. And you wouldn't believe it, after a bit of digging, there it was. Diamonds. Wow, I found my first diamonds. So I collected up all the diamonds, and what I decided to do was to make a diamond pickaxe. I would need this for obsidian. So I happily crafted a diamond pickaxe, and then I continued digging. And after a short amount of time, I found this mine shaft. Found a few pieces of iron, which is quite nice, and also some gold. But even better than gold, I found myself even more diamonds. And also, I found some lava. So, I collected up some obsidian because I'm going to be needing this for my enchantment table. Okay, it's time to return home now. So, I made myself a way up right here and headed back to base. But, on my way back home, I stumbled across this village. And I could see it was destroyed. This whole place was ruined. I wonder who did this. I definitely didn't do it. Just look at this place. Everything has been set on fire. Oh well, it's best I get home. So I travelled back to the Woodland Mansion. The next day, what I decided to do was to make the enchantment table. And there it was. Wow. But we definitely need some bookshelves. So I went searching around the mansion to see if I could find any bookshelves. But then I remembered that room I found earlier had some. So I decided to go and collect myself some bookshelves. I'm sure the illagers won't mind. And that should do it. Time to go and check up what enchants I could get. But unfortunately, I needed a lot more levels. So I headed back to the caves and collected up all the redstone, which seemed to give me the most XP. But then I tried to make this jump and I accidentally fell straight into some lava. Yeah, quite embarrassing. Wait, diamonds? All right, that should do it. That should be plenty of levels. So I travel back to base and enchant my diamond pickaxe, get myself unbreaking free and efficiency four. 
But then, as I went to go and enchant my iron chest plate, out of nowhere, I was hit. And as I turned around, I could see this villager was attacking me. I couldn't believe it. He did some serious damage. But then, I could see the villager was taking down my friends. But unfortunately, there was nothing I could do. I needed to get out of here quick. And then, he started chasing after me. I needed to get out of it quick, so I ran around the entire mansion, trying to lose the villager, but unfortunately, it wasn't working. As I headed downstairs, I turned around, and I could see the villager started setting fire to the mansion. This was terrible, so I tried my best to put out all the fire, but unfortunately, it was no use. In seconds, this entire place was on fire. There was no way I was stopping this. I needed to get back to my room, so I sprinted through all the fire and headed back to my room. But it got even worse. As I got back to my room, I could see my room was on fire. This was terrible. I had seconds to grab all my things. So I collected my iron, diamonds, and also I couldn't forget about my enchantment table. Okay, we got all our things. It's time to get out of here. So I sprinted for my life. But unfortunately, this fire was way too much. And then I got trapped. And I could see there was no way out. The only thing I could do was dig down. So that's what I did, and I have to say, that was very close. Let's hope the other illagers survived as well. So what I decided to do was to continue to dig down. What I decided to do was to turn this place into my base. And by the next day, here it is. It does look a bit empty right now, so I'll need to go and get myself some materials. Luckily, I found this cave. So I headed up and I went exploring. And luckily, as I was exploring this cave, I found some netherrack. I was a bit confused. And then I realized it was a ruins nether portal. This was great. So I collected up all the obsidian so I could use this to make my very own nether portal. Anyways, I continued to go through the caves and I found a way out. This was amazing. I could see I was at this forest, so I collected up all the oak wood and also some leaves. And finally, on day 17, get back home and start work on my very own room. And also, I would need some storage, so I built a storage area. And yep, that should be plenty of storage. Anyways, I got to work on the floor using some nice stone stairs. But there's one thing you can't forget, and that is decoration. So I added some lanterns around. And then finally, I place in the enchantment table and added some bookshelves. That's our room pretty much done. But unfortunately, I have not done this area just yet. And this place will need upgrading. So I just used some oak wood and also some more spruce planks. Added a few fences around, which look pretty nice. And yeah, this place definitely turned out very nice. As you can see, we've got some nice leaves. And also we got a bit of a lower floor right here. Not sure what to use this area for just yet. And over here, we have my room. Over here, we have our enchantment table. And we've got some furnaces over here and also some storage. And also what I decided to do was to make a bit of a hallway over here. But as we come to the end of this hallway right here, you can see this place is not so decorated. Unfortunately, I kind of ran out of materials. Anyways, now what I decided to do was to find myself some more iron. I wanted to make myself a full set of iron armor. And as I was going through the caves, I found this mine shaft. And I also found this slime. So I went to go and say hi. Anyways, I went around the caves, collected myself loads more iron, and then surprisingly, I found this minecart, which contained a golden apple. I was super happy. But then, as I was digging straight down, I stumbled across this lush caves. So, I collected up some moss blocks, and also thought, why not go and collect some clay? I might need this for future builds. But then, I found another diamond. I was very happy. And also, I found this axolotl. So what I decided to do was to collect up the axolotl and there it is. We now got a pet axolotl. Anyways, I finally make it back home, smell up all the iron that I collected. And once I was waiting for all my iron to be smelted up, I thought why not build my axolotl her very own home. I made this place look like an underwater cave, which was pretty nice. Anyways, the next day I went to go and check up on my iron to see if it smelted up. And surprisingly, it was. So what I decided to do was to make a full set of iron armor. And also thought, why not make a shield? And there it is, we've got a full set of iron armor. But it's time to go and enchant it. So I went to go and enchant all my iron armor, get myself protection one on all my armor, which was amazing. Well, the next day I noticed I was getting low on food. I needed a food farm. So what I decided to do was to make a very simple potato farm. Nothing special, just a place to get me started. So I placed it in some dirt, 
added some water and planted in some potatoes. So I collected up some potatoes and we now have food. The next day, now what I wanted to do was to go and see if the mansion was still there. After that fire, I wasn't sure, so I made some ladders and made a way up. And as I reached the top, I could not believe my eyes. I could see this place was still here, and everything was still on fire. Just look at this place. It has been completely destroyed. So I wandered around the mansion to see if there was any survivors. So I made myself a way up right here and I noticed off in the distance that there was this farm. I wonder what this could be. And as I went to go and investigate even more, I found this room. I could see that there was furnaces, chests and also this bed. I wonder who lived here. Just look at it. The mansion has been destroyed all because of that villager. I need to get my revenge. So the next day, I collected up all my things and headed out. I wanted to get my revenge for what the villager did. So I headed out across the lands until I found a village. And surprisingly, by the next day, there it was, a village. So I didn't hesitate and I rushed over there and started a raid. If they're gonna destroy my mansion, I was gonna destroy the entire villagers. So me and the pillagers, we went around the entire village, taking down all the villagers. And then finally, I took down the final villager. And there it is, all the villagers have been eliminated. So what I decided to do was to take all the villagers stuff, like all their furnaces and all their equipment. And as I entered this house, I found this chest and I could see that there was this enchanted book. And when I used this enchanted book, I could see it has given me more armor pieces. Anyways, it's time to leave this village and return back to base. So I finally arrived home and what I decided to do was to place down all the stuff that I found from the village. I definitely think it's about time we go to the nether. So I placed in all the obsidian and there it was, the nether portal. And as I headed through, I found this crimson forest. This was great. So I collected up some crimson wood and also found these stream lights. But then you wouldn't believe it, I found a nether fortress. So I entered the fortress and went around exploring. And surprisingly, I found this chest which contains some diamonds and surprisingly I also found some never warts now, I would need these for potions but unfortunately you can't make potions without blaze rods so I took down some blazes and collected some blaze rods and once I was in the nether I also thought why not go and get myself some ender pearls that should do it five should be plenty so I get back to my nether portal and now what I decided to do was to make some eyes of ender I wanted to go and find the stronghold And surprisingly, by the next day, I found it. I found the stronghold. And surprisingly, I landed straight into the library. This was amazing. So I collected up all the bookshelves that I needed. As I was collecting up some books, I noticed that there was this chest, which had these enchanted books in it. Wow, now I'll definitely be sure to take these. But you wouldn't believe it. As I was exploring the stronghold, I found a second library. And this time, there was even more enchanted books. Anyways, I get home and make a load of bookshelves and then go and place them in. And the great thing was, we can now get level 30 enchants. Well, 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 the next day I could see my armor was pretty destroyed. I think it's time to go and upgrade it. I think it's time to go and find ourselves some diamonds. So I headed back to the caves and there it was, diamonds. Okay, that should do it. 53 diamonds should be plenty. So I return back home and make a full set of diamond armor. But unfortunately, there was one thing we was missing. We needed some levels. So I went back to the nether and collected loads of loads of levels. And I have to say, with that enchanted pickaxe, collecting these levels didn't take too long. Okay, that should be plenty of levels. It's time to return home and enchant all our armor. Anyways, I get home and enchant my diamond sword and also all my armor, get myself some amazing stuff, combined in my pickaxe with my other pickaxe to make the ultimate pickaxe. And there it is, we now got a full set of enchanted diamond armor and tools, and also thought why not make a lapis block. 
for good luck. Anyways, I think it's time to go on a bit of an adventure, so I headed out and found this village. I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to test out my new sword. But then, as I was out exploring, I found this pillager outpost. So I went over there and went to go and say hi to all the pillagers. Anyways, I also could see that there was some dark oak wood, so I collected a few pieces. I'm sure the villagers won't mind. Anyways, I entered the outpost and headed upstairs. And as I got to the top, I could see that there was this chest, and I could see that there was this XP bottle, and also I noticed that the pillagers had these banners right here, so I collected a few. Anyways, I said my final goodbyes to the villagers, and I continue exploring. And I found an igloo. This was great, I rarely find igloos. So I entered the igloo, and I noticed that there was this hatch right here. And as I made myself a way down right here, I found this villager. Nothing special really, but I did find this chest which had a golden apple in it, and also found a brewing stand. But that was it really, there wasn't anything else, so I left the igloo, and continued exploring. But then, as I was exploring, there it was, a jungle. I was looking for one of these. I rushed over there and collected up some melons. I would need these for potions. And also found a bit of bamboo. You never know, I might need this. And then I found this giant tree. Anyways, I collected up some cocoa beans and also some jungle wood. I would need this for my builds. But then, as I was exploring the jungle, I found some pandas. I rarely find these. It was nice to find some pandas for once. Anyways, as I was exploring, I found this abandoned village. I could only see there was one house here, which was kind of strange, but there was a lot of hay. So I collected up all the hay that was here. But then, as I was going through this birch forest, I noticed something off in the distance and I could see it was another woodland mansion. So I made a way into the Woodland Mansion and I went around exploring to see if I could find anything interesting. I found this room which had a load of trees, but there was this chest which had even more saplings in it. But then as I was exploring the mansion, I found this secret room. I had to go and investigate. And as I got to the very end, I found this chest, which had enough enchanted book in it. Now I'd definitely be sure to take this. Anyways, I went around the Woodland Mansion, and I surprisingly found some more bookshelves. You can never have too many bookshelves. And also, I found this chest, which had a name tag in it. And what I decided to do was to now collect some carpet. I would need this for my base. And that was pretty much it. There was nothing else at the Woodland Mansion besides this giant chicken. So I left the Woodland Mansion and I think it's now time to return back to base. But then as I was on my way back home, I could see there he was again, the villager. I needed to take him down. After what he did to my mansion, there's no way I could let him get away with this. I needed to stop him. So I chased after this villager. Finally, I was catching up to the villager. I needed to stop him. But then, as I went to go and strike, he turned around and hit me. And I went flying back straight into some lava. This is extremely bad. So I had my golden apple, and I needed to place it in my water bucket as soon as possible. But I couldn't quite reach. But thankfully, I was able to place it in my water bucket. And I have to say, that was extremely close. I can't believe it. I can't believe the villager got away again. I must stop the villager. Anyways, I finally arrived home, and now what I wanted to do was to name my axolotl, and I could see she was very happy. Anyways, I also wanted to do some building, so I cleared a massive space, and I wanted to build a library, and placed in a load of bookshelves, and decorated this place up, making it look like a library. Placed in a few item frames, to give it some detail, and also decided to make a brand new enchantment table, so I could place it in right here. And yeah, this place looks incredible. As you can see, we've got loads of bookshelves around, some leaves, a load of lanterns, and also these item frames, which definitely makes the place look a lot nicer. Anyways, I headed back to the nether and collected up some glowstone, and also thought, why not upgrade this area? This place is not looking so good. So I collected up some sand and also some gravel so I could make some grey concrete, and then I got to work on transforming this place. Placed in loads of grey concrete and also these stone bricks, added some stairs around, and for the roof, I added some quartz, which looked pretty good. Also added this redstone lamp for detail. And yeah, this place is pretty much done. After building this place, I wanted to now decorate the rest of my base. 
And finally, here it is. As you can see, I added some flower pots with some bamboo and dark oak saplings. And I've also added this carpet, which goes all the way around. Added a loads more leaves around and also some more lanterns. Added these concrete walls as well. And also decided to change up the hallway a bit. As you can see, we've got some dark oak wood for the roof. And if we make it to the end of the hallway, as you can see, we've got some dark stone bricks, which look pretty good. And of course, the entrance to our base as well. And I also thought, why not make a secret room? And if we head down this hallway, you can see it leads straight back to my room. I'm very happy with this build. Well, well, well. Now what I wanted to do was to upgrade my armor a bit. I wanted to give it some better enchants, but first I'll need some more levels. So I collected up some levels, and as I was going through the nether, I found this bastion and found a lot of gold. Wow. And that should do it. That should be plenty of levels. So I get home and enchant some more armor. And then what I decided to do was to combine it with my other armor to make the ultimate armor. And that should do it. That should keep us very strong. But I definitely think it's about time we make some potions. So I cleared out a bit of space and made some health 2 potions, also some regeneration potions and some strength 2 potions as well. You see, I would definitely be needing this. So the next day, now what I decided to do was to upgrade the entrance of my base. As you can see, it's all stone. So what I decided to do was to go and find some obsidian. That would be a lot stronger. So I spent the next couple of days collecting myself loads and loads of obsidian. Okay, that should be plenty of obsidian. So I get home and place in all the obsidian. You see, I wanted this place to be very strong. You see, if the villager ever found my base, he couldn't destroy it. And finally, there it is. Our base is now complete. And I have to say, I think it looks amazing. But I mean, just look at this place. Look what the villager has done. There's no way I can let him get away for what he did. He destroyed the entire mansion and also tried to eliminate me. I can't let the villager get away for what he did. I must put it into this. So I collected all my potions, golden apples and equipment and I headed out. I needed to find this villager. I needed to go and get my revenge. But then by the next day, as I was traveling, I noticed something off in the distance that there was this forest that has been set on fire. This must be him. This must be the villager. I have to go and check this out. So I sprinted over there the fast as I could. And as I made it over there, I could see this forest has been completely destroyed. But then as I was making myself away through this forest, I noticed off in the distance that there was this pillager outpost. So I rushed over there the quickest I could. There he was, the villager. I knew he did this. I could see he has set this entire outpost on fire. I can't believe this. I must stop him. So I chased after the villager the fastest I could. I was not going to let him get away again. And then finally, as we left the forest, I could see this villager had an entire village. I needed to stop the villager, but there's no way I will be able to take him on. I needed to think of a plan. So what I decided to do was to make a trap. Now that should surely work, but I needed a place to make this trap. So I went searching around and I found this spot. And I thought, you know what? Here would be a fantastic spot to make this trap. But first, this place needs a bit of terraforming. So what I decided to do was to collect up some dirt and flatten up the ground. And then I started work on this trap. So what I decided to do was to dig a massive hole in the ground. So I dug all the way down to deep slate. But there's a few more things I need first. So I collected some wood and also collected some sand. Also, I would need some gunpowder. So I collected some. And also, villagers hate zombies. So I thought, why not push these zombies into this trap? And that should definitely scare the villager. 
Okay, it's time to set up this trap. So I placed in some TNT, added some signs, and then I added some sand. And that should be it. Now let's hope this works. It's time to go and confront the villager. So on day 100, I make it back to the village. I could see this villager has all these buildings set up here, but I needed to go and get the villager. So I carefully made a way over, and then I noticed the villager had a villager farm. This was getting out of hand. I needed to stop him. I continue searching for this villager, and then as I was walking right here, there he was. He jumped straight out of the never portal. So I rushed into this house the quick as I could, so the villager couldn't see me. And then I went to go and use my spyglass. I could see, yep, there he was, the villager. But then he started walking off. I could see he went to go enter this building. I need to go and stop him. So I carefully followed. I can't believe he has a never portal right here. But then as I was approaching the house, I could see he was crafting something. This is not good. But I couldn't go and just attack him. I needed to wait for the right opportunity. But then I could see the villager was leaving. This was my time to go and attack the villager. And I could see the villager was working on something. So I attacked the villager and he instantly turned around and started attacking me. I needed to stop him, so I fought back. My armor was no good compared to this villager, but I must defeat him. So I sprinted as fast as I could back to my trap. Okay, this is it. Moment of truth. So I break the TNT and there it is. The trap worked and a villager fell. I can't believe it. We did it. We just defeated the villager. Anyways, it's time to get out of here. And there it is. We did it. We finally survived 100 days as an enchanter in hardcore Minecraft. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.